Okay, seeing that it's uh, 7 o'clock, I'm going to go ahead and start the, uh, start the call the meeting to order. <clears throat> um, I'd like to remind everybody that Chelmsford Telemedia is um, recording and broadcasting tonight's um, meeting live. Um, and then it'll be available uh, um, on YouTube probably tomorrow as well. Um, for folks watching at home, um, all of the documents that we're going to be discussing and uh, presenting tonight are available at robertsfield.org at our website, robertsfield.org. Down the page, uh, at the bottom of the page, you'll find um, a July 6th meeting and all the meeting document links are there so you can follow along. Um, and they'll be there for the rebroadcast uh, as well. Um, we'll start our meeting. Oh, let me ask if there's anybody that rec is recording the meeting. Uh, seeing no one. Um, we'll start our meeting like we always start our meetings with public input. Is there anybody that has anything that they wanted to, um, to share before? Seeing none, um, our first item on the agenda is um, to approve the meeting minutes from June 8th and June 13th. Um, Alice, I know you sent those meeting minutes out. Mm -hmm. Did anybody have any comments on the June 8th or June 13th minutes? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I would accept a motion for approving those. So moved. Uh, all in favor? It needs Aye. to be seconded. I just, oh, <laughs> sorry, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Do you need an agenda? No, I'm good. Um, so our, we've got a pretty tight um, agenda tonight. We have a lot of information. What we try, we've tried to do is, uh, you know, we had our, our um, public input sessions and site walks. Um, there are a number of questions that came up during those. I've tried to, we tried to uh, um, collect the answers for most of those and um, gotten some more information about some of the other different issues. Um, so what I'm hoping we can do is, cover off on all the additional information that we've collected and then at the end of that um, hopefully that information will give us enough information to, to be able to take a vote on the final list of um, <coughs> features and their locations and all that so we'll finalize the feature lists and then um, we have another meeting scheduled for July 18th um, that would be our last meeting and then hopefully at that meeting we will be able to approve the master plan document verbiage I guess and um, we will have the, the, the base plan in, in place for that. So that's, that's kind of our agenda. Any questions? All right. So I mentioned the uh, public input session we had. We had uh, 30, 38 people attend our public input session at the police station. Um, we received 16 written comments. Um, just in general, 11 of those were yes, they supported the plan. Three did not support the plan as it was, and three didn't circle either. Um, we also had a site walk that was postponed from Saturday to Sunday because of rain. We had about 17 to 20 attendees. Um, we received seven comments there, five yes that supported the plan, one that did not, and then one that didn't circle either. Um, some of the questions, these are some of the questions that I heard. I don't know if you guys have any others that you want to add to this, but um, these were the issues that I, uh, that I heard the public asking. Um, switching from an asphalt to a permeable pathway, um, flipping the athletic fields, um, and what, what the impact on safety, fill, and impact on ball fields would be. Um, switching from the two planned baseball fields to one, um, including the bandstand or not including the bandstand multi-use pavilion in the plan. Um, adding solar panels to the bandstand for um, uh, electric use. Uh, the location of where, uh, the irrigation well for the uh, ball fields and uh, pollinator park. Adding more picnic tables and benches, especially along the uh, permeable trails. Um, what the projected costs were and then what that burden is going to be to the taxpayers. Um, if the um, town can put pavilion usage restrictions on um, the bandstand, the timeline of the construction, um, is there going to be a maintenance plan, and then uh, tick control and just general park pesticide use. Any questions about, about the public input session or any of those? Are there any additional comments that you guys heard that weren't included on here that we need to discuss? So um, this is a note from, uh, well, we received notice from uh, Katie and Wright, who's not here yet, um, that we've gone over budget on our $20,000 site plan fee. Um, so the town manager has asked that we provide a specific one-time final direction to Howard Stein Hudson to keep the costs uh, for this work to a minimum. So that's our goal for, for tonight, I think, is to provide Howard Stein Hudson with our final input on what the site plan should should include. So that's that's what we're moving towards. Any questions on that? 
I, one of the questions that came up was if it was even possible for the bandstand to have scheduling restrictions of um, um, content and decency and noise levels. And the town manager said that the, the facilities division would need to adopt the policies and procedures and that they, those guidelines could address the noise levels and decency standards and then they would have town council implement it. So um, we can, I think that what this tells me at least, and I hope you guys agree with this, is that we can um, recommend that um, guidelines be put on the bandstand if we do include that in the final uh, site plan. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. um, at, the, at the public input session, we, the, the community was asking about um, how hard was the uh, community band, how firm were they in the stance of the west side of the park versus east side of the park for placement. And I think we communicated that um, they were pretty firm in that. And so I, I reiterated with Dave that that was Dave Tweed, the, uh, um, our contact there, to see what his perspective was. And, and this is the letter he provided. Um, and I'll just read the, the underlined section. The bottom line is, is that the compromises we have to make to play at Roberts Field are worse for us than our present situation. We won't make the move. Um, basically, the west side looks like a step up, where the east side looks like a step down. So I think that's consistent with the information that we were providing at the public input session. And, and Liz is here with the community band. I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to add to that. That pretty much states our position, <laughs> just as it is. And I don't know if there's anything else that's come up that you guys needed to ask, but uh, basically, okay. we did a really good job of figuring out what we would need. So. Okay. Did you guys have any other questions? Yeah, I, I did actually. Um, so the um, uh, the concert for July third, there was a a, um, a portable stage, yes. and that seemed to be big enough to fit about half of you. Was that the entire band that was present? It turns out that's not actually our stage. The night before, the town had another concert. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember the name of the group. That's their stage that they had left behind for whatever reason. We were informed that we were okay to go ahead and use that. That's not anything that we use on a regular basis. That was the first time, probably only time, sort of thing for us. But if the town were to provide some some su such platform, that would be an acceptable way for you guys to play. You know, I'm not sure. I can ask. I mean, I just that's it just struck me that it was there. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first time that that's ever happened for us. Okay. That I know of. Um, so I can definitely certainly check. Okay. Um, might be more interested if it's something that can hold the whole band. Exactly. Half. Exactly. Because there was some, we were having a little bit of an issue with sound on that. Yeah, and I just thought I would, I would ask because it was, it was there. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're talking, so if it was provided on the common? For instance, yeah. Or I'm, I'm just want to sort of understand what the options are. If such a thing were provided on the common, would that be, and, and were big enough to, to, for everyone to sit on, would that suffice for your needs? Um, The echo part. chamber. Oh. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The yeah. part that's going to send our sound out to the audience better. Um, just having a hard surface to put chairs on while it makes it maybe a little more comfortable is not going to really change the sound or anything like that for us. So, so even so, I, I do believe that they make them with with um, roofs as well. I don't know. I like. I, have, I, I was just googling, wildly googling, but um, such would would with a roof of some sort would would be. My chance. If you guys has an option like that, if this can't go forward for whatever reason and you find something like that that would work for us at the common, I'm sure we'd be willing to entertain it. I don't know that we could commit to it necessarily. Well, well we can't commit to it either, but, yeah. but we can bring up the, the if idea. It's something we could try out, certainly. But again, it's we've got a system that works okay for us. Mm -hmm. If it's not going to work better, then yeah. it's hard to change. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I'll certainly bring that up to them and see if that's something they'd be interested in, especially if it's portable. And, um, and the other big thing is just our storage overall. Mm -hmm. And if it's something that we have to take care of and set up and take down, that's probably well, we'll not going to fly either. We've got a lot of older generational sort of players that already have a hard sure. time helping us with setup. And if it's something that the city, the town would do all on its own, probably more likely. Okay. Okay. Something I would entertain for sure if this can't, if we can't go forward with it here. And I can certainly bring it to them. 
the, the other wild and crazy idea I had, Bill, was um, I did wonder if such a portable stage could be used in Roberts Field, if that would be more acceptable to, to, to the neighbors, because that, that would certainly put a, a real bound on when performances would be. If, you know, so that's, I just wanted to, to just bring that up because it's, it's just another data point to, okay. to think about. Okay? Okay. All right. Any other questions? I grabbed this um, screen grab from the telemedia broadcast just to show, well, one, it, it'll, it shows the, the stage that set up that you guys were talking about. I know it's kind of small and blurry, but um, you can see the, the carriage house to the left on the top of the, the picture, and then next to it is where the band's set up. Um, but it also gives you some idea of the crowd, too. And granted, this is the July 4th, well, July 3rd concert, so um, I think what I've heard is that the numbers for these, this concert is usually larger than the the summer concert that's that's coming up um, next Tuesday, starting next Tuesday. We definitely want the love for everybody to come to both next Tuesday and the following Tuesday concerts. There is sometimes a difference in jazz versus concert band. Um, last year it was pretty even between the two, but in the past we have seen differences in numbers depending on the group playing, just because a greater number of musicians know a greater number of people, right. um, we can spread the word better. So and so, I don't know if that'll make a difference, but just in case you go next week and you're like, oh, there's not too many people, it is a jazz band, and sometimes they're still working on building their audience. And so, a shameless plug, uh, Tuesday, July 11th, the, the Chelmsford Community Jazz Band will be performing, correct? And the Common. And then um, Tuesday, July 18th, yeah, the, the regular community, the full community band. And then I believe the following Tuesday, the 25th, I think, is... Um, it is community band? Okay, I wasn't sure. And then it's like one week jazz, two weeks community band, the next week after that is the jazz, and then the band is two more. Okay, great. And, and Liz, do, do you have a, uh, maybe not be a fair question, do you have a gut feeling for how many people come to these the Tuesday evening series? Like order of magnitude. I can't. I mean, I, this looks like several hundred. Yes. Like um, 400 or 500 people. No, I. No? I, 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 well, I don't know. Maybe I will say that um, Dave has committed to doing a head count for okay. the Tuesday Summer Series, so we, so we have that built into the, we, okay. we should have an idea um, in time for our July 18th meeting to have an idea of what the, at least the jazz band will be. Right, at least one data point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. great. All right. Any other um, comments or questions? So one of the first things that was discussed quite a bit was um, switching from, uh, asphalt walking trail to um, permeable pathways. Um, and Katie, Katie and Wright, who's here, had mentioned crusher fines. Um, and I did a little bit of internet research and defined it as, it's defined as small particles of crushed rock. And basically, it's the crushed stuff that comes out of the granite quarries. So it's, and it ranges from a powdery dust to um, 3 8 inch pebbles. Um, the USDA Forest Service said that with proper subgrade preparation and drainage, the crusher fine trails should remain stable for years in all weather conditions. Um, Steve Yonley, who's um, here as well, uh, commented about the maintenance, saying that the maintenance will be fairly constant, especially if it's heavily used with uh, bikes or strollers. Uh, once the top level, top of the gravel gets loose, it's susceptible to washing out, rutting, creating a trip hazard. The trails to the dog park have already had some repairs, for example. Um, and then I asked if it was okay for playgrounds, and he said yes, but again, similar concerns as above, although you most likely won't have bikes in the playground. Um, the cost comparison is um, asphalt is t roughly $25 a linear foot for a six-foot wide path versus the... Now, is, is Crusher Fines the same thing as, the, as a gravel path? Is it just two different names for the same thing? Call, it's what Romo pack? I'm sorry, I can't. Roma. Roma pack. Okay. Gotcha. And is there any difference between the Roma pack um, trail um, subgrade preparation than Crusher finds? I, I I understood it to be two different things. So it's just two different names. 
nothing more than a three eighths inch strong. Okay. Um, is it ADA acceptable? That would be my only question. I don't believe it is. It is if it's if it is if it's built correctly. It is. According to the according to the trail service, it's like that. That it can be. Do we need to designate it as a crusher finds pathway? Um, is there any? Not necessarily, no. That looks like you said there's different names for the material. Okay. So Okay. So, and the and the surface, the preparation, the the base and all is all done the same generally. Okay. Any other? Um, I have not been able to connect with the people down at the Parks Department in Boston. They recently finished um, is Harambe or Harambe Park, which is very um, accessible and have a mixed use of different surfaces within the park. And maybe they, considering they just finished, they could have some advice for us on, you know, what's working for them, what isn't, and, um, you know, how much they decided to do poured rubber, given that we're in the Northeast and, and things like that. For the playground? For the playground. Okay. It is a huge playground. Um, it, with ramps on both sides. It looks like it's almost a f not quite a football field of, right. of play area. Um, for, the, for the playground budget, we've got um, the poured in place um, pathways budgeted at least, okay. right? And, that's, and as you know, that's, that's the, probably the most expensive pathway that there is available. So um, I think I think this was was more referring to the internal uh, the internal walking, walking trail, track. right? So, um, but for possibly purposes also, um, if it's ADA compliant, um, also between the natural features uh, of the natural playground area to allow it to be wheelchair and and crutches accessible. Um, but not go with the poured rubber surface or asphalt. That's in the walking trail, mm -hmm. right? N no, in the walking area from the, pl the play area of equipment to all the natural features. Right, okay. So I guess what, I'm, what I was gonna suggest is um, for the purposes of tonight, because we do have to get the, the, the final mm -hmm. site plan um, um, approved, considerations over to Howard Stein Hudson tonight, right? Um, or at least in one final final batch, um, we've got a we've got a large pool of money set aside for the budget for the for the pathways inside the playground, which could um, be reduced if we went with a you know w once the design is put together could be reduced um, once that design is put together from the, the poured in place to the permeable or some sort of mix. But I think if as long as we have the the biggest budget set aside for it, right, it at least allows us to plan and, and allows that for that design to take place, right? Does that seem yeah. Steve, I have a question for you, if I can. The the ground preparation on the walking trail for the crusher finds or whatever we call it, the Roma, um, asphalt compared to what to do for the the crusher finds, is it similar ground preparation bef there? So I, I mean, I know your concerns about safety on the and maintenance on the the trail, but if we go crusher finds in five years down the road. It's it's digging up. It's killing you guys' budget and time. It's it, you can pave over it. It's not it's not something that you you have to dig it all up to start over again, right? Okay, thank you. And how much? One one sec. How much um, maintenance do you think would you estimate? I know it's that's tough to say, but assuming it gets you know bike riders. At minimum, you're gonna have to go around it every year, and you know at least make sure the grade's still there. You know, the first couple of years after. You so it's a once a year thing probably I mean roughly I know it's hard to I mean but 
Do they have this at the dog park? Dog park. Do they use this anywhere else in town right now? That you know of? Uh, I think the path we built up Oak Hill is crap. I don't know if any of the conservation land has it as trails. There might be a, a Sunny Metal Farm. Oh. There might be some areas that are on the pack material, but I don't know if it's paths or extended park. Uh, okay. That's a specific ADA that they put into the pump house Bob had a question first. Yeah, I was just going to say, on uh, July 4th, I went to the Bitterman National Park, and they had some kind of crushed rock material that seemed super hard, uh, seemed perfectly suitable for wheelchairs and strollers and all that. And people would use that a lot. Um, it, and I don't know how the base was, but it seemed to have, uh, I don't know, sort of a stone dust covering on top, but it was solid. I mean, it was, so I'm just saying that it maybe requires a lot of maintenance, but it can be ADA uh, suitable, I would think. I've lived in other countries that have used that. Um, Could you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Carolyn Muldoon, and I currently live at 12 Marion Street, Chelmsford. Thank you. And Bob, could you do the same? I kind of skipped over. Uh, uh, Bob Kofi, 319 Old Westford Road, Chelmsford. Uh, any other questions about, the, about this? Do you want to hold off on voting on this? Um, Switch over until we get to the rest of the stuff, or do you want to talk about it? Finish, finish this part up. I mean, we. I, I don't know about everybody else. I prefer to go do a section, make a decision, and then if we want to, something changes it. We could revisit, but is that way we don't end up at ten o'clock and we haven't done anything yet? Um. Yeah. Let's let's hold off. I think we're going to get through it pretty quickly. All right. And if we can't, we'll come back. I promise. So um, this next slide, I want to I want to preface this by saying this is something that I did on my own. This isn't represent the, the committee's uh, um, input. Um, we went out and tried to, and I've also learned that that this may be incorrect information. So take that with um, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Um, so we went out and um, tried to find um, level um, or show where the grade would need to be for the lacrosse field um, using two different methods. Um, we used a, a, a water leveling method um, with a hose and a, and, a, and a bucket, basically, and then used a portable um, transit to try and find the, the middle area, when, when we, the level area. When we did it, we expected that that was going to be a zero slope, um, but come to find out, it's not a, it wasn't a zero slope um, because math proved that wrong. Um, the stake was placed 160 feet from the parking lot, um, and the first method showed a 27-inch um, rise uh, in slope, and the second method showed a 28-inch, um, I'm sorry, I got it, I got it backwards, a 32-inch um, rise in um, rise. Doing the math, rise versus uh, divided by run, gave us a slope of 1.4 and 1.6 for each of those marks. Um, at the site walk, um, Casey Ferreira from Howard Stein Hudson pointed out that um, lacrosse regulations um, allowed for a maximum slope of 1.5 uh, slope. Um, and if you do the math at uh, 160 feet, um, that, what I believe, showed that it would require 28.8 uh, inches of fill. I then found a um, formula for calculating the amount of fill that that would take, assuming level planes and just sort of a pie piece of, uh, of, the, uh, of the, the lacrosse field only. And I used, um, the current lacrosse field is 300 feet by 160 feet, 
160 feet or 180 feet? 180 feet. Um, I only used part of that um, 180 feet because the front part of the field was actually in that, that um, level field. So I, I took off, just to try to be as conservative as possible, what it would take. And so the, it came up to um, 1,600 cubic yards, or about, if I use 14 cubic feet dump trucks, 115 dump trucks just for the lacrosse field. Now, um, Katie, after seeing this information, Katie Enright um, prepared a using the town's topography maps um, and I tried to enlarge this as much as I could Katie um, for your um, um, so you, you can explain what you did here and and and, and show why um, why my my stuff is wrong <laughs> calculations around the field based on the existing grades and kind of where we want to end up based on the percentages that are allowed across say the soccer lacrosse field and or across the baseball diamonds and what I found in looking at it and this was just a quick exercise that I obviously did with a red marker but on the plan but essentially I only found that in the in the in the bottom right corner basically in right field of that lower right hand field would have about here? About right a little bit further north of that would have a, basically a fill right there of about 1.2 feet, and that was the highest point of fill that I found throughout long expanses of the site. And that's because the site slopes basically from north to south and from west to east, but the most distinctive grade changes are as you get closer to the pond. And also, you, you can grade across 160 feet at a 1% elevation is, is almost or 180 feet, which is the width of that field, at 1% is 1.5% is 2.7 feet in grade that you're losing. So it's pretty significant the amount of, even though it would feel to you being out there that it was, per se, flat, you're losing 2.7 feet across the width of the field, which is pretty significant in the course of the, so in the size of this site. So what I found was actually some of the grading that I did, some of the spot grades that I came up with are right on point to where the ground is today. So what I'm saying is I don't feel that, that doing this change is going to be very significant fill-wise. I think certainly any field, any field upgrades out there, if they stay in place or if they're moved to these locations, are we're going to acquire some fill to level them out. Um, and I don't see this as being very significant. Can you speak to um, the, the change from here to here? How, how, because that, that's the, that's the part that I get stuck on. Um. So there's a grade at the, at the edge of the parking lot. If you come off the parking lot to the edge of the lawn, the grade's about 225. And as you drop towards the middle, kind of of that multi-purpose lacrosse soccer field that I have it labeled, it's 222.4. Um, so, and then at the edge of the field, it would be 222.3. So come halfway between that, you know, you might be adding again a foot of material in the middle of the cross field. And there is a three foot drop between that point and the point that you probably measured, which is 30, about 36 inches. Right. But you're dropping almost that across the field. So. You're not making up for that much material as you get as you come back into that area because it's across the entire field you're losing 2.7 feet so the fill is is not three feet of fit because you're losing grade as you come across okay does that make sense your yeah. fact you're factoring in a completely level field she's not is no it? no because the the slopes that we showed weren't level they showed a 1.6 or 1.4 slope uh, we want so to just so we can, me and Bill met you there on Saturday because we couldn't make the site meeting on Sunday, the, the site walk on Sunday. And what we also discussed, Katie, was the fact that the outfields are very big in the baseball fields yep. as to regulation, but they're never, the, the uses of the field are never going to use the outfields. Right. So realistically, for what you're talking, what me and Bill had discussed, what we'd rather see is actually just pushing the lacrosse fields away from the hill a little more. Because the mass, the most massive slope is right at the beginning, and then it tapers off, and it's still sloping. But if we had some flexibility in the plan to allow for 
placement within this region and allow for overlap, I think I'm personally, I'm fine with that. And I think you take out some of the fill. As long as everybody realizes when they, when they go to execute the plan that just because the outfield's drawn exactly where it is, doesn't mean that the lacrosse field can't slightly overlap because number one, there's not any games of kids that would hit far enough to get to the lacrosse field at the same time and it, it, the slope favors us that way. Even so in the fall? When you do your 12 year olds there? The, the lacrosse team, lacrosse is so using it was in the fall. Okay. Yeah. So. No, absolutely. There, I mean, there's, there's float, there needs to be float built into all yeah. of this yeah. based on the conditions that you're going to see when you actually put a shovel in the ground. Yeah, and that's what it. Yeah, so, absolutely. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't understand. <laughs> hardly anything of what you said earlier on the um, the thing, and that's fine. Um, do you have an idea of how much fill it would take um, with yeah. your conditions, I mean, compared? No, I mean, but my conditions are essentially what you're going to pretty much have to do based on redoing the existing field, I believe, to get the grades to slope correctly. So I don't think that there's, I don't think you can leave the field as is because there's, there's ruts and holes and Correct. that the drainage is not moving right now. I don't think it's going to be that much more than what you're going to have to do with the current fields to make them playable again. So I don't believe it's significant. And this exercise, this exercise I ran through quickly, obviously I, I said that to you just to kind of to show that it wasn't that significant. We haven't done a cut fill analysis. There's really not enough information to do that. I could do an estimate based on what's here. Um, but as I said, I, I think you're going to need to bring in fill for the existing fields to get them to drain the property. Right. Therefore, I don't think that this is, is that much more significant to do it this way. So this is, this is, that amount of fill on the very bottom is completely that. off, is completely I off base. Yeah. I do. How much fill do you, would you roughly estimate you would need for that front lacrosse field? If you need a foot and a half in the back. Roughly, I mean, is it half that amount? Is it six inches? I mean, the other consideration is, is if you raise, raise the grade there, what the impact's going to be on the drainage? Because you're, you're. I think that the playground's currently on the same level field as the that area, right? Because it's kind of the outfield. It's sloping, it's sloping from existing grade down. Okay. Along the natural hillside, so the playground is going to the playground is going to drain off. In the way it does now, which is essentially to the to the west, to towards the, the pond, or t t the other way. The playground <coughs> goes the other way, I believe, based on topography. It's pretty much a mm -hmm. high point for that left-hand side or the western side. 220, 220. Yeah, a lot of the playground actually goes off towards the west right now. So you're not going to be blocking the water from flowing. Plus, I mean, you've got you've got most of this area is pervious, so you don't have a significant amount of runoff coming out of this area anyway, because you're not proposing a lot of impervious surfaces. So there's not the, the water flow is going to continue to happen in the same pattern, just be more efficient. You, Jim, question: How much uh, fill are you going to put on top of the ledge? I use, the, I use the grade at the top of the hill as existing grade. Yeah, I know, but you've got a ledge right at the surface. You can't grow grass on the ledge, so you're going to have to bring this, it up somewhat. I, I understand that. This is a master plan. This is I, I understand plan. that, I'm not, too. I'm not checking to see that there's enough loam out there. If we need to bring in a couple of inches of loam, then it goes up a couple of inches. These are all adjustments okay. that can be made in the field. Do you, are you guys all comfortable with the grade? Yeah. Yeah. As long as it works for teams, yeah. Everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, Greg. Bring a final question out of this. Do we need to be budgeting for the fill? Do we know where we can get it from? He's got the fill. <laughs> so I think we have, we've got fifteen to $18,000 in um, the field grading would not include seeding and stuff. So do you feel like that budget um, covers the grading that? Um, yeah. And that's mostly for those are rental and home. We'll, we'll supply all the rest of the bill, whatever the need. So is the, is the loom going to come from um, well, it's got a loom town owned stuff? 
Is it? Um, we bid out from every year. Oh, okay. From a yard, you know. So, you know, we can't Okay. It's usually the same price, about 13, 14 bucks a yard. And you feel like the the estimates that um, Katie's proposing are um, in line with what's in the budget? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, if you regrade the existing fields with new fields, then that concept that keeps showing up on the plan, I'm still pushing dirt around, so I still got to rent the building. So that was all figured in when I gave you that number. But for the loam itself, though, and it the loan, loans in that number, any additional fill that would need you know, take out a, a dip for, you know, raise the grade a little bit. We can supply all that, so we have a giant pile of screen room. We just use that. Okay. And that stuff is all going to be safe for use at the playground for the field and all? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't deal with dirt, so I don't know how it's graded or made. Or... On screen room. Okay. Take from projects and just sits there and we get a screen on the screen. Any other questions? So I also included um, some information because the maximum slope came up. Um, I thought it would be helpful to have this in the plan as well um, to identify um, the field dimensions for um, the baseball fields as well as low cross field. And then since it's a multi-use field in the front, um, identifying what the what the sizes are for a soccer field and baseball field. And one thing that came up was that the lacrosse field I saw was 330 feet for regulation, and we've got a 300 foot um, field. Is that an issue? So it's not an issue. So what happened was when the plan evolved, it started as a soccer field, right? And then it turned to a soccer multi-purpose field, and then when lacrosse came to be the most relevant, it just hadn't been updated. There's there's plenty of room to have additional 30 feet, and I can show that in the final plan. Okay. So, Okay, and I have some information coming up from Chumps Youth Lacrosse about that as well, but um, I didn't know if there was, but you're saying there is space to add the extra Absolutely. 30 feet? Okay. Um, and I think this is consistent with the, the Little League field, right? Okay. Um, and then I'd like to be able to add the max slopes too, if we could. Do you have that information for the um, football fields, soccer fields, and baseball fields, so that we can include that in the plan? I know you sent me some information earlier. I don't know if it was in there. I didn't have a chance to yeah, read it. it. Yeah, for the lacrosse field and for the It'll be included in the information you sent me? Yeah, okay. Well, it can be. It's okay. Good. It's wants it to be up now. That's okay. Okay. Um, so, um, based on all the, on the feedback then that we, and the discussions we were having, I sent LaCrosse um, um, a question, some questions um, regarding their preferences, um, and then also regarding um, the costs that, they're, that they are currently incurring with um, field usage. Um, their preference, their board preference was that the field, as it is shown on the site plan, be in the front of the field. Um, they see it kind of as, a, as an opportunity. They're really, really excited about the um, dedicated field, having a dedicated field, because they don't have any of the dedicated fields in town. So this is going to be sort of a, a really important thing for them for that reason. So they like the idea of having it up far forward and up front, all right? Um, they're okay with the field having the maximum of 1.5 uh, slope. And um, they're also okay with it being 300 feet, but they prefer that if it was 330 feet. Um, one thing that they pointed out this last paragraph is, is that um, it's very important for them for this project um, to have a regular mowing schedule and to be committed to by the town and followed up, and followed up on. Um, they estimate that it's gonna require once a week mowing. I think you'd probably agree to that. Once a week mowing in the summer and then um, probably bi-weekly late summer and fall. Is that consistent with what you would I mean, I guess the fall doesn't matter, but the summer is consistent with what uh, baseball would want. Yeah. And I think you guys have said that you've had similar issues with, uh, with mowing as well, right? So it's going to be really important for us to um, put forth a recommendation that um, helps to fix that problem. And I don't know, Steve, did you guys come up with any kind of a plan or have any discussions about um, the mowing issues at the park? Yeah. Did you want to share that?
So you feel like the, um, it, with that? Well, the, the issue is, you have all these fields. You have school fields, you have Roberts, Southwell, East, uh, you know, and I'm sure I'm gonna forget a few, that two guys on 60 inch mode at the time of It's nearly impossible. You know, you get two days of rain, you're, you're doomed. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so we're, we're looking to uh, purchase a piece of equipment that can be used for also for other things other than just mowing, uh, and snowblower attachments and the like. Um, you know, hopefully we're fortunate enough town meeting approves that. And like I say, we have cut cut the high school practice fields from you know, two days to one day or half a day. You know, like we're going to demo it next week for a couple of days and see. But, you know, the facilities is extremely limited with the guys they have to mow grass. It's two, like I say, it's two guys on two 60-inch stags. It takes forever to cut the practice field. It's ridiculous. You know, I mean, it takes about about a day to cut Robert's field. Never mind Bonnie, Southwell, you know, all these other places that they have to go. You know, the parks department is one guy. Right. You know, so it's, it's ridiculous. So this solution sounds like it would, uh, it should fix the problem. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're fortunate enough to have some summer kids that can help, you know, with some weed whacking and things like that. And we're still trying to, you know, sort through issues in Bonnie that can, you know, this is the best. Uh, but, you know, hopefully this new piece of equipment and, you know, a little bit of a shift in some personnel duties and we can rectify the issue. Okay. And are, are you comfortable? Do you feel like um, facilities is comfortable with us putting in a recommendation that the uh, the town well, yeah, mow weekly and you know stuff gets left behind i mean and now this is one of the properties that does sometimes because they have softball tournaments every weekend at south well you know they play baseball all summer long time right and everything else so those sometimes take a little bit of a higher priority you know just like they're playing softball all weekend this weekend so those fields have to be mowed they have to be ready to go you know, and this tends to get, you know, like I say, especially if you get a rain day, like tomorrow it's going to pour all day. So, you know, we've lost a day. So the schools are behind us, everything gets put. We're only two guys, you know, and it's also summer. So that's when all the projects happen at the schools, because no kids, obviously. So these people get pulled all over the place. You know, it's a limited staff. So uh, hopefully, like I say, this new piece of equipment, we like it at the demo. You know, we'll add it into the capital, we'll push the pickup truck or a van or something off and you know, we'll see what happens in the spring. So, so you're comfortable, it sounds like, with uh, with yeah. us making the recommendation for it, at least the weekly mowing in the um, yeah, in the so spring and early summer? Yeah, there's a reasonable expectation that everything's mowed and maintained. Okay. Now, obviously, we're going to have a different bed. Okay, That's great. We'll do it Any questions? I'll say yeah. one thing. Since you're going to be irrigating the sod or the turf, you're gonna, probably going to have to do it weekly from spring to fall. The grass isn't going to uh, stop growing in, in the summertime. Okay. This year, of course, it's not. Last year, it was. Okay. Other questions or comments? So I also asked, um, I also asked uh, Chelmsford Youth Lacrosse, as well as Chelmsford Youth Baseball, just to put some uh, rough budget numbers together on what they, you know, what their skin in the game is, and with regards to maintenance and costs, because you know we've we've developed these budgets, and we're showing all this money that's going towards um, putting these fields in, and I don't, I, I felt like it was maybe painting an unfair com uh, comparison of that you know, we're, the town's putting all this money in, and they're sort of reaping the benefits and not um, spending um, money, their own monies, on on the field maintenance and other things that they're doing. So that's the point of having um, these uh, these numbers here. Um, but in essence, what it shows is that um, um, they're currently doing field lining. Uh, they're going to be responsible for, or are willing to be responsible for, replacement of the, uh, the uh, lacrosse goal nets. Um, the 1155 maintenance is the cost of the lawn care. It's a third of the, the lawn care um, fertilization schedule. Um, also, they're putting in, uh, re they're using their own rebounder nets. Um, the labor to get the stuff moved back and forth, and then um, any other field supplies that they need. Um, so they're looking at about 36, 36.65 annually for maintenance, and then 
uh, the startup of the cost would be about 59.15 for them. And then they're also committed to um, um, creating the capital replacement fund to keep those, um, those new nets and everything in place. Any questions about uh, Chelmsford Luther Cross? So baseball, and Bill, you sent me this um, today. Um, the bathroom cost, they currently rent the porta potty for the field from um, um, is that April 1st through um, August. Yeah, August 30th, and that's about uh, $50 a month. Um, and then you had mentioned at the public input session that if you switched fields, that it would it would give uh, would cost more money. And the reason why it would cost more money is because the um, the cost to put the clay in is twenty four hundred per field, and with the two, you get about a thousand dollars savings there. So yep. to move it off to another field, it's going to cost you guys literally another thousand dollars, roughly. Correct. Any questions about that? Um, this was a discussion about um, moving one of the fields, one of the two fields that are on the site plan elsewhere, somewhere else in the um, in the town. Um, and it's kind of a discussion of uh, the different, I guess, locations that were mentioned. Um, at the end of the, the discussion, it was that if, we, basically, if, if we insist on removing one diamond, we should come up with an agreement on which field we'll end up with. And then um, also pointing out that if we moved one out of Roberts Field, that it's going to impact softball as well, because softball, it's going to affect their, their playing games as well. And we haven't had conversations with them, which also brings up another point of, you know, we're, I think we're, we're treading on a fine line of uh, being in um, the wrong lane on this. Um, um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a committed stakeholder with, with baseball that um, has expressed um, a need and use of two fields. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot more um, that would need to happen to find another field somewhere else. And I don't know that we're really in a position to sort of direct that thing, but we could make a recommendation. Um, that we the town try to find another location if, if we get to that point um, but here again I just want to point out that I think we're kind of in a we're I, kind of shifting lanes here a little bit so we've got to be, kind of be careful I also haven't heard a good argument for why we only put one field in the what we gain by only doing one field and so I don't see why I understand it's public input so it's 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 got to be discussed and we, we got to understand it but I, I just don't know what we gain by taking out a field and then going through all this work, like you said, to find another field, it doesn't really change the site map very much. It doesn't change anything because we'd have to reflip the whole site map unless you like, unless you were doing it for that reason. But where Lacrosse wants their field where it is, we really don't. Now we really don't gain anything. So, any uh, comments? So. Um in the public input session, Katie, you had referenced um, the email that Steve sent about um, about the different schools, and this is the this is the information that was sent. So I just wanted to be sure that this was included, and I won't go through this in detail because, like I said, I feel like at some point we're kind of in the wrong lane on some of this stuff. Unless you guys have any comments or questions about it, none. None. Um, the next thing, the tree protection. So as you know, we have um, inventoried um, just about all of the major trees in the areas that are being touched by construction. Um, and we've discussed um, either at the first site walk or some others, uh, or in these meetings, um, how some of the trees are gonna have to be removed um, to accommodate the, um, the fields and the walking tracks. So, what we tried to do, um, Jim identified um, um, the trees that uh, looked like that they would definitely impede on the walking track. And those trees are the ones on, well, first off, on the left-hand side is the overall map. And everything that's in um, a yellow circle are, are trees that have been inventoried. And you can see we've, we've inventoried trees you know, along the in Pollinator Park on the corner of Old Westford and Westford Street, as well as in the playground and then back in the, the southern portions of the, uh, the park as well. 
Um, the ones that are in yellow are all the inventory trees. The ones that are in yellow that have a red ring are the ones that are in question that we need to decide on if we want to if we want to designate for protection or not. And then the ones that are in red that have a yellow ring around them are the ones that um, that um, Jim has said that could, could be taken out. So um, this is the list of the trees. Um, I don't know how do you guys want to. We can start going through these now individually or. Um, how do you want to tackle this? In subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah, it does because we have to give this to um, Howard Stein Hudson, and then they need to um, they need to uh, um, be able to adjust the plan if they need to, um, especially on. Um, we can start from the top, and it really will go pretty quickly. I think this is a large. Sorry, Bill. Can we just clarify? Are we talking about that the trees are not going to be specifically protected, or are we talking about that this that the trees would be actually taken down, actively taken down? I think actively taken down. Is that entirely necessary on all of them? I mean, I see some of them down along. If you look at the map over on the right, um, toward the right. No. So once again, if 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 they're in red. Right. Those are the ones that would need to be taken. Those are the ones that we're going to recommend at least right now to be taken down. Right, but if you go further right from that, so I'm using this as an example. So the one just just to the left of your marker there, that one, for instance, where, so so Katie Enright from Howard Stein Hudson has told us this is a conceptual plan, it's not exact. Um, that one that's right there, I don't know the number of it. It's 69, it's a black cherry tree, it's um, uh, and it looks to be on the edge. So it, it looks to me like it's on the outside and it doesn't necessarily need to be discussed because it looks like the circle is outside of where the path would be. And um, we have heard that the path can be adjusted. So, so our goal for this discussion is to say, okay, this one is far enough away from the trail that we should designate this one as, protect, as being protected. But it's close enough to warrant a discussion, right? That's fair. And so that's. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure if we're if we're talking about protection or taking down, to me that's very different because you can you can still work around. I, I, I know I, our friend here would be. <laughs> you could do work around a tree and not protect it. The tree will <coughs> obviously be impacted, but it doesn't necessarily mean to me that all of these trees that we're just going to be discussing would have to come down. That's, there's a big difference to me because, of course, <coughs> I don't want to take down any tree that we can leave. Okay. So if there's a possibility of leaving a tree, it's not 100% adequately protected, so we've decided that we're not going to protect it within the guidelines, but we would protect it as best we could. It would be my preference to have that sort of conversation rather than, you know, keep it or trash it. Okay, well, then I don't think we would necessarily have to say that it's definitely going to be cut down, but I think that the possibility is real that it will be cut down. <clears throat> if, that makes, if that clarification makes, uh, makes it any clearer. Excuse me? You're talking about the red, the red with yellow surrounding only when you say that, right? No. No. So the, the, the red ones are the ones that would need to be, that, that we've sort of gone through or Jim's gone through and said these could be, could be removed to benefit the baseball field and the walking trail, right? The, um, the ones with the yellow, that are in yellow with a red circle, right, are the ones that are close enough to be within the walking trail that if, if we do want to determine that they're worth protecting, that we need to say it so that Katie can take the plan and adjust the walking trail around this guy or around these guys or make sure that the fence line doesn't cut through here or cut through here. Sorry, can I change the discussion for one second? I just want to, this is what I was worried about. This, this subset of the discussion we need to have probably, uh, like you're saying, maybe we need to have it tonight. But I really just want to make sure, I mean, we didn't vote on permeable versus asphalt. We didn't vote on placement of fields. I just want to make sure for the people in the room that are concerned about more than just the trees, we don't just skip over and have to go back to all this stuff. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're on. S we're, we're halfway through the presentation, so I think okay. we're. I think we're in a good. I think we're, we're doing now. Well, depending on how much this is going to bog down. Choosing to vote on trees over everything else, and I think it's going to be a longer discussion than we 
I think. All right, you want to come back to it? Well, I don't. It's it's up to the committee. I'm just voicing you my guys opinion. Want to come I don't back think to this it? is a quick discussion. I think we're going to end up with a longer discussion on this. Is my only fear. I I would prefer to come back to it. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah, because really, Jim has to be here, and we have to be here. And so um, the budget additions. Um, since the last time we looked at the budget, uh, we added in um, two lacrosse screens on the end zones, yep. right? So that you'll see a change with that. Um, we added in um, um, power for the pavilion outlets. That was two 110 volts uh, outlets. And then the irrigation line inc cost increased um, by $2,500. We also um, got a budget for um, um, putting outlets at the top of the parking lot for food trucks. And then um, we now have the linear foot cost for the uh, crusher fines. So those two things haven't been added or changed to the budget. So what you're going to see in the budget is, um, I think we're at 1.102 and um, on the high end. Um, and if we make that switch from asphalt to permeable, I would expect, because it's like at 40 now for asphalt and it's over half the cost. So if we switch that over, we'll probably drop down closer to a, a little less than a million or right at about a million. Is the town okay with us putting outlets in the parking lot? Yeah, we haven't decided that, but yeah. Okay, and they don't run into a problem. Okay. Do you lock the um, lock the outlets? How do you? They're just there. Okay. <laughs> or cars. <laughs> well, we are now. <laughs> Any uh, questions on the budget? So um, this is the site plan. This has been a site plan um, since before, prior to the public input session. And then I just wanted to point out um, the notes. So as we go through this, if there's things that we want to add to this plan, and it's, these have kind of changed, and it's kind of, um, there's been some stuff added and some stuff taken off. Um, I believe there was a, there was a crusher fines um, um, sub, whatever, substrate thing on there earlier. But we can add in things on here. And I think it's one of the things that would be important to add in here is a reference to the master plan document. So those two, these two things are joined together um, permanently. Um, the tree inventory, field slopes, and then um, the crusher finds path sign that was on there prior. So if there's anything that you guys want to add to this, we should make that suggestion. Adele? I'm a little concerned about the uh, play area on the other end of the parking lot and where you've got maybe middle school kids playing four square, whatever, and whether there's anything to stop um, a rolling ball from going into the street. Into the street? I don't think the, into the parking lot maybe, but I don't think it would go in, what do you mean street? Uh, well, Old Westford? Yeah, yeah uh, where, where it would go someplace where there are cars. Do, do we need some sort of safety thing there to block? Having, uh, I don't know. I think having walked around there, it, it doesn't seem to me like it's very likely at all okay. that a ball would go so far straight. I, I would think if, it, if anything, it would go into the pond, <laughs> which is a different problem entirely. Um, or the parking lot, you know? Yeah, yeah if it bounced far yeah. enough, it, right. it could. but. I don't think that would be common. So okay. I'm not sure. I, I haven't the really there. visualized it and, and the slope there and things like that, so I didn't know whether a rolling ball could pick up speed versus the child and okay. things like that. So if it's unlikely, then cool. Any other comments? Um, one of the... Uh, at the public input session at the police station, someone mentioned um, um, reaching out to Chelmsford Youth Hockey, which we did. Um, I did get feedback from them um, today, and I didn't have time to add that into the meeting, but um, their, their um, response was that um, um, they probably would not be able to do any kind of a, um, a weekly kind of pond skating type of thing that would um, um, 
you know, go for for um, like a number of weeks, any kind of a scheduled thing, because it's, it would be right during their busiest time when they're on the ice, right? Um, but they may be interested in sort of like a one-off or, or one or two-off kind of a special event type of thing. Um, they'd have to talk to their board about it, but they seem interested in it. So I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I don't get the sense that they're looking for any kind of a stakeholder. Um, Thing, but there may be some special opportunities for them. They did specifically ask if we would be open to um, adding some sort of a skate deck, wooden type skate deck in the summer months. And um, my response to them was that I didn't think that would be something that we could do because of the baseball and lacrosse using the fields. Plus, even if it was after there or in between their summer fall leagues, um, it would probably end up you know, killing the grass. And that's something that they're going to be trying really hard to you get You mean the an grass actual going. practice deck that they would, they would practice skate on? Or, or some kind of like have some kind of roller, roller skating kind of? type oh, of oh, yeah. Um, thing. Yeah. Hockey doesn't end. What? Hockey doesn't end. OK. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it starts in September and ends in May. So. Um, <laughs> Do you all do you all agree with the feedback that I gave to them on? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So no yeah. weekly things, and they were they were sensitive to the abutters issues with noise and stuff about that as well. So, um, but the you know the special event kinds of things they thought that would be kind of cool for them to do. So, I suggested Winterfest, and I thought that if you guys had any specific ideas about um, things, if you would share that with me, and then I'll I'll send that off to them. Poor Winterfest has not had uh, freezing temperatures for, right. for a couple of years. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. Mild fest. Yeah. Any uh, any comments or questions? Um, specifically with the with the funding scenarios, um, the town manager said that basically the the playground is going to probably be it uh, at the fall if it gets to that. We're, he still hasn't made up his mind on if it's going to because there's some other issues that are come up in the town that um, are taking a lot of the funds for that are available. Um, so he hasn't made up his mind yet as as to if the Playground will get that four hundred thousand will get budgeted for um, um, fall town meeting, but it's at least on the consideration list. Um, and then regarding public input about the playground equipment and how that process would move forward, um, you know, we our our term is going to end on the thirty first. So after we present to the selectmen on the thirty first, we're we're done. If the selectmen and the town manager decide to create the advisory board, um, the advisory board could could. could um, continue that um, um, public input process part of the, the playground bid, and I, I hope that they will. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, since the, the um, budget is going to be tight for the town, if it's possible, as we look at the features, to define some subset of the playground as being a phase one, like, you know, replacing actual traditional equipment and phase two being adding a little more naturalistic I, I mean I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad for for the overall budget but Adele? I think we should be using the counter argument of you know all the donation plaques that you see at the other mm -hmm. playgrounds okay. that this is not entirely a town cost that we can get donations and there are grants out there as well especially okay. if we make it universal accessibility there are more grants for that than there are for just general playgrounds okay. so so the only issue with that and just to play devil's advocate is that um, you know we've been I think we've we've heard from the community that they want this to be a priority and they want this to be done as soon as possible so to and I agree there's probably a lot of cost sharing opportunities out there that's going to take time. And so if we take that road, right, um, that's going to mean that we probably can't do a spring build, right? So it's, it's kind of one or the other um, at that point. And I, I haven't necessarily gotten the sticker shock feedback from anyone that I've spoken to on the town side about, and maybe that's just because they won't say it to my face. <laughs> um, I haven't really gotten that, that sticker shock feedback from them on, on that part of it. Okay. more so on the other parts of the stuff and how you know when really talking about sort of having that plan to sit on a shelf that we can kind of execute and fit into the the town budgets where we can um i'm sensitive to what you're saying i just don't know that we have that i think if you know i've heard the community say that they want this done as soon as possible right. you know and that as soon as possible really sort of says that you can't pursue those things oh except that as i read that 
it says that they're going to put it out to bid prior to town meeting. No, so what that was referring to is um, the RFP process. So I was just trying, we were trying, I was trying to get a handle on sort of how that process worked. So what he was referring to was that you could, you could actually create the RFP, put it out there, have playground contractors submit bids for it, you'd keep those bids sealed, right? And then once you had the funding secured at a, mm -hmm. potentially at fall town meeting, then you can open up the bids. So that's, that's what he was referring to. So that was just more of how you would handle doing the RFPs beforehand. And then in, in conversations with Steve, I don't think that's something he's comfortable with, so. I will that, not get a project one on my head. Right, so it would pretty much spin, you're kind of spinning people's wheels. Yeah, I mean, you can prepare all the documents, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't solicit bids until after October town meeting. Right. You can get bids from five different companies, and town meeting gives you 200 grand, but you bid something that's a $400,000 playground, potentially, or whatever the number. Right. You know, Right, and you wasted everybody else's time too. So you right. prepare the document for the most part, minus you know, just adding in kind of a, you know, a rough estimate. Right. You know, and if I know, once I know what town meeting authorized, they might not authorize anything, you know, but if you know, if they authorize three hundred thousand dollars for the playground, you know, then I know I got to shrink the size, maybe shrink different things, or I can do more of this, less of this. So I can write the RFP based on what I know I have for the number. Right. I mean, the basic framework is still being there. Right. You know, then that's October. You know, you didn't know maybe you open them beginning of January. By then, we already got the old one knocked down, fenced down. You know, so we'll come snow melt, uh, ready. Right. And that seems to be, I mean, that, that spring build seems to be what everybody's sort of pushing towards. Yeah, because I mean, we're getting some heat that it's, it's rough. Right. You know, and we're trying to make through the summer and then, you know, in the fall, right. close and tear it down then. Because it's, it's a mess. And, and people were saying, have, were, have said all along in the park user surveys that they don't want any downtime, right? For the, so I understand that, but okay. um, my thought would be to be able to go to town meeting and say, we have already contacted such and such corporations in our area, and they are willing yeah, well, we to provide grants, but without a number yet, so that we're not necessarily telling them exactly how much right. we can bring in ourselves, but know that there are there will be other sources of money other than town money. Ideally, the, 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 the Board of Selectmen and the town manager will say, you know, we want, to, we want to form the advisory board as soon as possible and then charge the advisory board with, with exactly that. Mm -hmm. So that time between when it's formed and when the um, town meeting happens um, in the last week, second to last week of October, I think, in the third to last week? or. Right. So then. Speaking to the, let me, just to speak to, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, local businesses and Walmart does small grant programs, twenty five hundred, five thousand, ten thousand dollars Lowe's does, aggregate, will donate money to the town for various things. Uh, you know, some of the local asphalt companies would donate work. I mean, they could even spread, you know, pathway material, whatever it ends up being. You know, so there's all, there's, there's grants out there that are very easily attainable in small, you know, small pieces of the project that would help offset something else, not going to offset all that money. You know, there's grants available that we can apply for, you know, towards the end of the summer that could be available in the spring for playground equipment. We get stuff all the time from town insurance, from all this, you know, not the nickel and diamond, but five grand here, ten grand here, all of a sudden, you know, it, but, you know, that's kind of, it's not going to knock the number from a 400 grand to a 250, but it'll, you know, take a little of the sting out of it. And, sure. You know, and again, you know, to, to speak of the 400 number, that was only because that the thing is massive. It's almost an acre, the big one there. So that's why that, that, that number so big. Well, that and the surfaces. No, I know. The <coughs> Right. 
And do you see the, the grant, that grant search process as being? That's all stuff that we were doing between Nick and uh, some of the other admin staff. They, they do all that stuff. So, you know, this committee task coming up with the master plan, you know, and we'll put, you get the budget, and then we'll be the ones who will use the term, but we'll be out shaking everybody down. <laughs> I was thinking more of you know, other corporations within the town, um, maybe even some of the corporations that are off one tent in Westford to say, you know, here's a place that you can come exercise at lunchtime or, you know, meet the family for a picnic instead of just eating at your desk. Um, so let's, let's kind of stick a pin in that and um, um, move on so we can get so okay. Chris's Nancy to vote. Can, can I just ask a question about if, if we have to only do um, the playground, which I, I totally understand, um, we wouldn't want to take that closest baseball field, though, offline next spring to accommodate, because, because if you look at the line that's currently drawn on the, uh, granted, it's a concept plan, um, but I would want to be sure that if we decide to go ahead with the, the full playground, we're not now all of a sudden creating a situation where the backstop comes down and that field goes offline and suddenly baseball has lost a field with no with no promise of when the funding is going to be available to get that field back online so so two things there um, the, um, the town's got to be responsible for the implementation schedule and the funding schedule so they're gonna have to work out with baseball and with cross on the timing of all of that right and so if it um, if, it, if there's a conflict in the footprint, then the town's going to have to figure out a way to kind of work that out. Um, I don't think that's something that we can necessarily. Well, I mean, define. we could say, you know, let's let's reduce the size or the, yeah. the width of the playground such that there would be, I don't know how much space okay. you would need, but 10 feet or something just to just to ensure that that the concept plan at least didn't show a conflict that someone felt they had to stick with if okay. it didn't make sense. You know, if, if we're three years out from having funding to, to do the baseball fields, for instance. So and, let's, and let's have a discussion during the vote for the... And re realistically, we're not expecting the playground to, to fill this entire area. I mean, that, that's, right. that's... It's a maximum available um, footprint. So depending it, on where the design comes in. It's a place in. that the playground can be located within. But I don't see it as anywhere nearly likely that, that we're going to fill even uh, even even more than half of that or, or I mean it's I know but but it it seems very unlikely doesn't it I don't think so and that not from the playground people that we've shared the, the plans with okay. well the they did say it was large they said it was large but I didn't get any feedback from anybody saying that it was not doable I mean okay. just to remind everybody we ended up this big once again to, to use the space mm -hmm. that we and then trim it down as we needed we also ended up this big because we wanted a grassy area within the playground and we weren't planning on covering the playground with permeable with wood chips or with rubber or anything else and if that grassy area ends up being the area to the right of the trees for instance the solution to the problem of the baseball field is is could just be that the playgrounds built and then the fences moved when the fields are made and then you incorporate it into the right. playground in the second stage and the playground grows a little in the second stage and it's just fenced in differently because one of the recommendations was actually to have two fences anyways to have like the mobility of the thing so theoretically it could actually stay with an extra fence going the other way. Part of the design process for the playground though right so that's yeah it's that's, all it's all outside all, our purpose. So we're just, just saying, saying okay. this is but I'm just max, yeah I'm just and this is how much money we have that's basically yeah, our that's a, that's yeah and some of the things going within that space are the lower cost areas, like the naturalistic area and the, um, the meditation labyrinth. And we're also designating a smaller spot for um, a toddler area so that it is separate from the older kids playing. So, so all that, those things will all be covered off in the, let's, let's cover that off okay. in the playground discussion. Right. Right? That's all in the playground area. Okay. All right. Um, so just a couple of other little things. Um, 
are there any special permits that you see? Uh, we asked Steve, are there any special permits? These are questions that came up during the public input session. Uh, any special permits on the plan? Um, you said a notice of intent. Is that what the NOI is? Um, that was mainly the only thing. And Katie, is there any um, special permits required for any of the parking lot or anything that you foresee? So the parking lot then might need a special permit because I think we have like 15. We go from like one, I think we have 98 to 113. Discussion that we weren't gonna. Well, it's just the stripes, the new stripes spaces. So I think we had seven. So we should be fine with the ones that we have. Even if we increase the striping, it's still not increasing the pavement. Maybe that those spaces. So. So it's it's 113 spaces proposed, and the existing is 98. So, Okay, so no special permits. We didn't need any permits for that based on the number of spaces for showing an addition. So it should just be conservation permitting. Okay, so no special permits for, for planning board or parking lot. Okay. Um, then there was a question about uh, prevailing wages being factored into the budget, and Steve said that yes, those were all factored into his estimates. Uh, we talked about. Um, Creating a, an, a detailed maintenance plan, and we have a um, we have a, a sample one that I felt was a really good template for it. And I think we've already collected probably 75 to 80 percent of the information that would go into it. Um, uh, and that that example is posted. There's a link posted uh, at the URL at the bottom of the page. And those those are just a couple of the pages, but it sets up the standards that we'd have for each particular feature and how it should be managed. You know, if it's the athletic fields, um, the irrigation, how it's to be managed, how the how often it should be mowed, those kinds of things kinds of things excuse me any questions about that um, additional questions we Steve uh, answered the one about fixing the mowing issues at the park and then how will the improvements affect drainage I know that we've been asking that is that is there any effect on drainage no effect on drainage it's, it's all contained on the property okay Okay. Do you foresee any changes to the the pond um, and the behind the in the wetlands back in there, like specifically the trail along the back of the of the pond? Do you foresee that water level being any higher because of the grading in the interior? Okay. 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 Um, and now on to the fun stuff. And I don't have your links active, Chris. I'm sorry. So you're going to have to do all that work for you. So um, these are the, these are the individual things that we'll be voting on tonight. Um, and then anything else that comes up that we feel like we need to take a vote on, let's go ahead and do it. Right? Um, if it's not adequately covered in these, so do you, let's. Do you want to start with the large natural playground? Um, let me just read from this. So it's three times larger than it is now. Um, we want to try to match the Friendship Park inventory, the play structures there, and we've got a listing of those, right? And that's, that's included in the appendix in here, and then that would help to, to write the uh, RFP as well. Um, to be included in the design, the mix of landform and natural play structures, open views, ADA compliance, universal access design, the separated toddler area, a segregated grassy area that could be closed off for mowing and maintenance, um, two shade structures, either some combination of um, bench shading or um, uh, um, covered picnic table kind of, kind of shade structure, or two of those or some sort of combination of it. Uh, perimeter fencing around with at least two openings. Um, a community build installation and then um, reusing the engraved bricks and trying to reuse the entry structure if it's if it's deemed to be um, safe and salvageable 
Um, we've got in the budget um, similar play structures, the manufactured natural play structures. Um, and like I said, we have that list of uh, the, the existing Friendship Park inventory. Um, the landform play areas, um, the interior pathways, and as I mentioned before, we have that budgeted for <coughs> poured in place rubber. So if we you know, needed to cut some or, or, or had the opportunity to cut some money, that would probably be one of the places. Um, the poured rubber surface area for the accessible parts of the playground, the universal access parts of the playground. Um, the perimeter fencing, shade structures, the picnic tables, reusing the existing, but those are going to require some type of maintenance because those are in pretty rough shape. I just saw that um, during the site walk. Um, an information kiosk, garbage bins and, and uh, footers, um, the adjacent garden, and then the, the maintenance for the, for the wood chips. So discussion. I would just say, why don't we put the, at the top where it says proposed, we think we've all said the same thing here a bunch of times, 0.89 acres. Can we just put proposed not more than 0.89 acres as needed or something like that so that when we go in, we, we're very clear that we want them to design to space and to make a nice flowing area, but it doesn't have to fill that area. So no larger than 0.89 acres. Yeah. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yes. Yes. Um, what about potable water? They said no. They said no. You weren't at the meeting. Yeah, that meeting right. Right. The water department yeah. won't do it. They can't do it. No. They can't it's, do it. It's a safety issue and a cost issue. No. Any other comments? Any comments? Sorry, quick question. I, I think I I'm sorry. Right. Could, you just, could you just state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, how much seating is there for parents and stuff around this? I can't remember. I know you just went through a whole list of all the things. Are there a couple benches that are specified in the plan, or are there like, I'm sorry, I think this is just, I can't remember. That's okay. We have um, budgeted for, right, at least budgeted for six playground benches um, and four picnic tables. And then um, we have budgeted two shade structures. Um, kind of a you know picnic pavilion type shade structure, but a smaller one that would hold um, two tables each. But those could be converted depending on the design of what the playground design contractor came back with. Those could be converted to like um, bench seating shade cover. You know what I mean? So I, just, I couldn't remember what you said. Sorry. I was thinking about castle trees in Littleton and they have a lot of benches around the edges that are very thoroughly maintained and they're very well maintained. Yeah. Six. Okay. Any other questions um, or comments? But there's uh, there's also an opportunity for that to be a donation thing. So if right. yes. sort of along the same line, uh, I noticed that the swings that are in the current park are are good quality, and uh, you often see adults, mothers, and fathers teaching their kids to swing and stuff. I think that uh, whatever the playground equipment is, it would be great to have some bigger swings so that the parents, while they're waiting there, can be sitting someplace, you know, beside on the, you know, maybe on a picnic table. There's the small swings that are on the side for the toddlers, which are, you know, which are great, but uh, it's an observation I've made, having been there many times, that, uh, you know, that the, the swings that are there are good. Right. And, you know, sort of larger size, and that should be part of the equipment. We have that in the inventory. So the toddler swings as well as the adult swings. Um, and it's the same number um, that's in the, in the inventory. I think what's there works really well. Great. Although it'll need to be expanded to allow for the um, handicap swing. Right. Any other comments? Um, do you guys want to go ahead and take a vote? I'll take a motion to take a vote to accept the description of the larger natural playground and budget allocation for it. Motion to accept. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Athletic fields. Um, so one multi-use lacrosse field, two baseball fields, an irrigation system, and storage sheds. And, um, so we have expectations. Um, vinyl coated chain link fencing for the backstop at 15, 
feet tall uh, with dugouts that would have roofs and um, uh, cement footers. Um, no outfield fencing. The dugout roofs would be eight feet tall, and that's primarily for shade. And then the floors are cement. I mentioned that. Um, the baseball field, the locations would be flipped. So the lacrosse field would go forward, and the baseball fields would go in the back. Um, this also expects that we would have proper drainage for the baseball fields, because they currently hold water on the infields. Um, there'd be no soccer goals for lacrosse fields, but there'd be two safety screens on either side of the lacrosse fields for to protect the goals, to protect the shots on goal. Um, we have a um, Chelsea youth, youth baseball storage shed adjacent to the to one dugout, sort of built into the dugout, and then um, the Chelsea youth lacrosse would be adjacent, would take the place of where the Engine 3 shed is now. And I know there's still some discussion that's been going on between um, um, Chumps with Youth Lacrosse and baseball about potentially sharing that dugout. So I think if that happens, then we can just kind of cut that, that last one off. But it's better, I think, yeah, to Yeah, we're still having those discussions. I think that's what's going to wind up happening is that we'll wind up sharing that same shed in the back there. But I think for the purposes of yep. tonight's vote, I think we can, we sure. can go for two. It would be a $6,000 difference if we cut that one off. And then they basically the lacrosse field would take the place of I mean sorry the lacrosse shed would, would take the place of what where baseballs is now behind engine three would just be a little bit larger, large enough to hold the, the, the nets. Um, like with our other stakeholders, we'd have uh, memorandums of understanding with the town and them defining what the maintenance responsibilities would be. There'd be an irrigation system and a lawn service program that'd be contracted out. Um, the field locations and access to the fields would allow for med flight usage and uh, vehicle staging, and we have uh, appendices for those. Um, and then we'd have nearby garbage cans for all three of the, the fields. Um, as far as budgeting goes, we've got um, um, the lacrosse field and then the, um, um, the grading and loaming of the, uh, of the baseball fields as well. Um, the screens, the backstops, the roofs, the sh storage, irrigation systems, garbage bins, and then the, we've got a maintenance cost for um, the bath, um, not, not for the bathrooms, for um, um, the uh, fertilization schedule. So any questions? Do we need this also for the natural scape in the playground? Need the what? Sorry. Fertilization and irrigation? Um, I, I'm guessing it could be extended into the playground. Could the irrigation system be extended into the yeah, playground if we need to? It certainly could be. I'd have to work with whoever designs the playground to figure out the placement needs and Right. We didn't budget for it, but I guess it, it could be. And then um, I don't know that you'd want to really put chemicals into the right. playground. So I, I, don't, I wouldn't be in support but of that. But I don't know what that surface needs, and I don't know if any of us research that. The, um, when the site walk recording, the representative from the conservation um, committee said that there were restrictions to, on the chemicals, what could be used to maintain um, those walkways. I mean, that, that area, that, as, I, as I recall from the, from the video. I don't know if you recall that conversation at all. Used to maintain which walkways? Well, I mean that these surfaces need to be treated periodically. Oh, uh, the poured in place rubber, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, they have to be treated annually, right. Yeah. So. But I think Adele's talking about, about the fertilization. About the fertilization. Yes. Okay, yeah, but what it just made me think of there, there are restrictions on what can be used there. Yeah. But we, I don't think we ever looked into the Yeah, and I don't, I don't know that, I, I think that. that would be more, that would probably happen after the design is set, probably, to be honest okay. with you. Okay. Was there a question out here? Sorry. No? Motion to accept. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the pond side, this is the um, smaller, I wish I had the map. So I'll go over here. This is the smaller um, pavilion that's right here. So this is a 20 by 28 multi-use pavilion. Um, it was sized that way to accommodate for the um, jazz band, although they don't, they don't, they won't want to play there, or potentially theater performances. Um, and it would also include replacing those three uh, pond side benches that are over there as well. There, that's in the budget as well. 
So it, uh, the cost includes the electricity and interior lighting, um, only to be used to break down stuff if need be. Um, three movable thermoplastic uh, picnic tables, like, like um, shown there, um, wouldn't have any walls consistent with the structures that are, that are there, and then um, the benches, and then a nearby garbage can. And that's a seventeen to $29,000 high low budget. Any questions? Comments? It's so we have no real, we have no stated interest in anyone actually doing performances there. Do, do we really need to have electricity? I mean, does it have to have electrical? Yeah, I was gonna ask the same. Um, I don't think it does, but it's close enough to the garage that um, it could have electricity, and I don't know that the cost or that. I guess for the skating, if you're there in the winter, it's pretty dark, pretty early. But well, um, okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm more wondering if we need it that size anymore. Can yeah. we go with the smaller one now that no one's going to use it for that? Can we just go with a two picnic table pavilion and go that? Do we need a three? Like, how much bigger is? I couldn't find on the map how much the smaller ones were. Twelve by twelve. So those were um, those. The 12 by 12 was sort of the smallest. The one's like at east, right? It's east is 24 by 26. It's 24 so by 26. So okay. So, but that's not, okay. But that's not huge either, so that's. No, it really doesn't seem as big as Yeah, no, so okay, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Any comments, public? Questions? Could this be des designated as a phase two or a phase three? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think the town can designate as much as they want as in whatever phases. They're, they're going to be in charge of the implementation, so. Okay. Well, if I can make a comment from yes. a priority standpoint, it does make sense. It sounds like this is lower priority than a lot of the other things that yeah. in terms of the fields and in terms of the playground. Is it appropriate to designate priority as you plan together? Yeah, we discussed um, coming up with priorities for the different features and decided that that wasn't something that we felt was in our purview. Since the town's going to implement it, it's um, it's um, kind of up to them on how they want to yeah. phase it out. But point will take. But yeah, it doesn't make sense until the pathways are there, really, because it's there for the people walking on the pathway. So that's probably how it will get implemented. When they do the pathway, they would do right. this or after. Any other comments or questions? Great. Does anybody have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The multi-use pavilion, the Chelmsford Community Bandstand Picnic Pavilion. Um, this is the 30 by 40 multi-use bandstand picnic pavilion located currently, and it's over here. I promise I just shine this in anybody's eyes. It's right in there, I think. Um, the band has committed to um, the summer series. The high school has, or those public schools have indicated that they have some interest in um, putting on performances there. We've um, heard from the town manager that they're, that the facilities division can regulate the types of concerts and um, I guess bookings that go on there based on um, content as well as um, I guess sound and stuff too however they decide to, to set those those regulations up um, it includes electricity for breaking down instruments um, after the performances um, no walls it'll house six thermoplastic picnic tables like what's shown there um, that can be moved out for the band so they can perform or for performances so they can be, they can perform there um, somewhat of a consistent structure the, the image that we're showing is one that I think we all agree that we liked but um, it's gonna you know we'll have to work on the design to make it consistent with the others again would have a, a stakeholder MOU defining maintenance responsibilities if the if the community band had maintenance responsibilities that would be worked out with uh, with the town and then a nearby garbage can we got a high a high budget a low budget of 55 and then a high budget of 76 for building it we also have um, about twenty thousand dollars set aside in the in the garage, um, the DPW garage um, budget for band storage, right for the internal partitioned walls. That's in a separate budget. Um, picnic tables and the garbage bin and footer. So, any comments? 
So I, I, I have some real reservations about this because um, we don't we don't yet know. For one one thing that was mentioned at the public input um, session, uh, the gentleman who was talking about hockey on the pond um, pointed out that perhaps a hundred parking spots would not be sufficient for the kind of um, um, audience that might be drawn. And also, we did hear from at least a half dozen local residents who who were very much against the idea. So I. I yeah, I would second those concerns and it also, I mean, I actually would invite the re new representative from the band to, to state like a, a, a last ditch case if we want. I don't know how the rest of the board's thinking, but we, it has switched focus of, of what, how it was going to be used. The amplification became more of an issue as we came in and it is a large structure and the placement isn't ideal, but it's better than it was on some plans on the map. So I have a lot of still concerns about it as well. And we didn't hear overwhelming. We had a couple of people come in and say they were positive for it, but there wasn't, I didn't see an overwhelming amount of people saying that this was something that they would love to see. So I have reservations as well. I mean, I went to see a thing last night at the uh, North Chelmsford Library, and there was a U2 cover band playing there. And I could see in two seconds them being like, well, can we play here? And that's much different than the community hey, public hey, band hey. playing. It's the, the unintended, unintended consequences that you may get by building something like this that you're not seeing. Yes, we could probably put restrictions, but somebody will always find a way to get around those restrictions. I'm also concerned about the food trucks. I don't know that that was necessarily what we were trying to do at Roberts Field um, to do that type of stuff. Um, and the other part is, too, the, at the public input, if you read all of the public inputs, which I did, almost all the ones that did not approve our plan it's all had to do with that. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, comment. I mean, can we just get through the committees real quick and then... Uh... See, I'm more... Here. My gut feeling this is a NIMBY thing, that people will enjoy it a lot more than they foresee enjoying it. Um, you know, all I can think of is the negative and nothing of the positive of the greater use of um, the whole area as supporting more community events. Um, music in the park is something that really attracts a lot of families with young kids, especially when it these are concerts or whatever that are still daylight out, or especially if an older sibling is in uh, whatever band is being highlighted that day from the school. I think there is a lot of community building that can be made around this um, that shouldn't be stymied by people's fear. I completely agree with the, com the community building. I just don't think that Roberts Field is the place for it based on what we were trying to do with the park. It just, but even in your in defense, you mentioned the, the community bands. We were originally building it for six performances during the summer. That's not but, cost effective though. No, but that's, but, but that's what we originally pitched and then it became, well, we'll use it more, we'll use it more. And that's where well, all of our fears came in. I'll, I'll say this, that, um, I always envision I, when I when I see a multi-use bandstand, I envisioned it as a performance venue, right? So if that was your perception, I, I respect that. But I think um, I think it would have been um, um, it would have been tough to um, justify spending a hundred thousand dollars for a six performance mm -hmm. venue. So um, I think that may have been somewhat of a miscommunication from the beginning um, about. It just being built for the community band. I think the, the the benefit of saying that the community band was interested in hosting the summer series there made it attractive. But I I, I feel I always felt that it would be um, a performance venue, right? So just to clarify, 
I think it's, it, yes, it has the possibility to be performance venue for more than just the band, but it also has, it's multi-use, it's going to have picnic tables in it, and it serves as a larger shade structure over near the playground, but not in the playground for families who wish to have picnics, maybe have aunts and uncles come over, um, watch birthday game, parties. Birthday parties. I mean, I, I do think that there would be plenty of use of it that is completely devoid of music. <laughs> um, but to, to share some of what Adele said, I, I think public music in the way that a community band offers free public music to the community is something that the community should always embrace. And I would never, I would never say this is something I don't want because it's music. I, I would say this is something I do think Chel Chelmsford could use at one of its parks. This is the one park that we happen to be working at now. We have space for it in this park. I think it would be wonderful to hear the community band music wafting through the night air over to my house. I'm, I'm back through the woods back behind that, and I love the idea of that. We had a member of the public speaking about her childhood um, in Iowa, I think she was, where she grew up going to these concerts with her family and has wonderful memories of this. And I, I think there is a lot of potential to build some wonderful community memories at a venue like this that can't be built in the center of town. You know, if it's not at this park, I'm not sure I know which park it would be at. I, I think the Chelmsford Community Band is a real asset to the town, and, and they, you know, deserve careful consideration of whether we can give them a little bit more permanent home. I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say a bad word about, about Chelmsford Community Band. I, okay. I've only ever heard praise, and, and I think that's right. But, the one, one thing is, I don't, as far as the infrastructure is concerned, I'm not, I'm not convinced that there's enough parking for, for one thing. And I do think that it's going to be quite a traffic snarl uh, when things, these things uh, let out. And the other thing is, I, I don't know how to weigh the very big objection of the people who live actually closest to where this will be located. Like, I'm on the other side of the field. And, and like you, gee, it, it sounds very, it would be very pleasant, but, but how do I weigh my enjoyment at a distance with other people's true discomfort uh, in proximity? So I don't know what, I don't know what the responsibility of the, the committee is in a case like this, but we have very clear objections from the input session. My concern would be just with the, I think you said the facilities department would set parameters. And I would want to know how they're going to be enforced. I think it's great. And then what happens? Like, are they going to change five years from now? Like, my fear is we're going to build something, set parameters, and then walk away, and things are going to change. And it's not going to be the vision that we first saw and how it will impact the abutters. Um, I'll just, I'll, um, I've, I've gone back and forth on this. So um, I, think that, I think the core issue is, is that it um, is, is, is that it turns Roberts Field into a performance venue that it's not now. Um, and what's the impact going to be? I think what I heard from the public input session and from just talking to people in general is that the com this is something that the community generally supports. And to Adele's point, um, there's um, abutters who don't. I feel like we have um, tried to create a plan that um, addresses as well as it can those issues. It puts it you know, it faces it away from the, the abutters that were most concerned or most vocal about the issues. You know, we've got sound mitigating, landscaping. Um, you know, we are adding additional parking. We don't, we don't know for sure if it's going to be too much or too little. Um, but really, for me, the, the core issue goes back to what's it going to do to the park? You know, how's it going to change the park? And, and, and I think it really ultimately is going to make it something different than what it is today. And just in talking to people who have been longtime users of the park, that seems to be that that change seems to be the thing that is most concerning to them, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not 100% sure where I'm at even now on the vote. <laughs> um, is there a way of doing movable walls that would help also direct sound? Um, there would be that could be yeah. like a garage door type that gets pulled down. Not, during. There, I mean, that, that's of 
course it's possible. Um, and we had the discussions with the community band about doing that and that was something that they said that they would consider at moving screens in place mm -hmm. to help with that um, down the road. But you know, here again, you, you know, you may have a, um, um, a Beatles tribute band, you know, that doesn't have those things. So those things don't always get used. You know, you can't really. Um, well, that's, that's why I'm asking about something that could be built into the structure that are powered so that we don't have to worry about what group is using it and do they have people who are able to bring down these doors, but rather something that provides a back wall and two side walls so that the music is definitely being funneled in a particular direction and sound absorbing material is in place so that it's not going back towards the abutters as much. Right. Can, can we get the public? I'm very curious. I'm just yeah, make no. sure everybody's had their. Yeah, I well, might. Yeah, definitely. I want to hear what people. Yes. yes. Right. Okay. So we, we can't move to the east side. That's been the, the band wants it on the west side. It's a it's and that's firm. It's sun and bugs. They the sun in their eyes and bugs from the pond. They won't go to the other side. They said if we build it on the other side, they won't use it. It's got it's got to be on this side of the park. Um, because I was going to suggest that you do in fact move it for two yeah. reasons. We can't. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, that, that's really where we wanted to put it. The original. Originally, right. we want to put it up against the space right, but we can't. Correct, but we can't. Um, it would be in the open areas of the uh, there's outfields. Yeah, grass. there's no fencing on any of the fields, so it would just grass. be. It's all grass. It's just grass. So the primary concern having it near the pond is bug control. And sun. And sun. Yeah, we wanted to have a backdrop to the DPW garage originally. That was how this came up originally, because it was going to mask the DPW garage. It would right. be a nice structure, but, plus feet away from the but it, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It, it, we'll be building something that won't get used. Chumps are banned. Any other comments? I was going to say with um, the Beatles tribute band, I think that's something that needs But I played for a band in Minnesota that did exactly that. They had a pavilion with basically garage doors that could open down. If I remember correctly, because I never really paid close attention, they didn't use any amplification whatsoever because it was so well built to direct the sound out in a way. Hmm. I'm not sure how to achieve that, especially financially. I just know that it is possible. So it could solve the problem of amplification. Um, where all we would ideally want is a microphone so that we can announce the numbers and give a little bit of background to the music. Um, so again, I can say that that's possible. Um, and with regards to if it is something where we can put a backdrop, with having people living so close, they may not even notice it like at all. If we can get that backdrop in there, we can get it better amplified out, um, at least in my experience. Thank you. Any other, Barry? I think Allison uh, expressed very well how I, I generally feel about it um, in terms of being a very positive thing for the community. However, having said that, I, I, I'm not a believer in going forth at the expense of the future. So I'm, I'm more concerned about the others than and any of the other concerns that, that have been brought up. I don't think any of us are really, really know what the effect would be to the bodies. I think that's the frustration. We just, you know, we're, we're, the abutters themselves are making assumptions about what, what this could turn out to be. We're trying to make assumptions. The idea you brought was wonderful about if we could design this better, that would be, that might be the answer. 
Uh, I don't know if you have the option to, to hold it. And, and uh, I know your time is running out in terms of going before the town now, but I don't. Maybe it was an option to hold this off and, and try to propose it as a separate project in the future. But beyond researching the structure itself more, uh, I would be very interested in what other towns have experienced that have done something like this. I know uh, Westford's got a gazebo. I don't know how often it's used or anything about it. They've definitely got the butters. Uh, they're either having good or bad experiences or, or different, but to me, that would be, if, if I had to make the decision right now, I'd run out and try to get more from okay. other people that have done something like this and either had good or bad experiences. Um, I certainly wouldn't like to see this go at the expense of the abutters, but at the same time, I hate to have it bypassed voted down yeah. just because we don't, you know, we're making assumptions that we could be wrong on. Mm -hmm. So I guess that just right. makes it more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? One Sorry. other note too. I'm always sitting in the van, so I don't know for sure, but when I speak with friends and family who come, even just on the common, with the amplification that we have, they still have a hard time hearing certain instruments and certain mm -hmm. parts. So I might encourage or ask people to, especially if there is concerns, come to some of our concerts so that they can, I'm even curious to hear, you know, they can walk around behind us, see what it sounds like without anything. They can see how far away it takes because some people say even just at that cemetery, basically across the way from us, you really can't understand what's going on. You just can tell that there's music playing. So again, I can't speak for it, but I would highly encourage there's nothing wrong with walking behind us and walking around with the common. Um, so if there are questions or concerns, and like I said, I'd even be curious to hear it sounds like behind us, what you hear, but um, it's like, uh, again, how far away you have to go to be amplified. It will be a little different with the jazz band, with such a strong brass and percussion bass, um, but I can speak, you know, the community band with all the woodlands that we have. We do a lot of quieter, more classical pieces, and we yell the trumpets a lot and make loud. Um, so just the encouragement, whether or not this goes forward, be curious to hear how the sound travels across the grass. Thank you. Hi. Hey, I was just going to say, uh, again, like you were talking, that it is a, you are kind of a multi-use pavilion, and I love the idea. I have a daughter with a birthday this weekend, we live right next, near the park, and I, if you put that in, I see lots of birthday parties in my future down at the park. And I do see that while it does turn into a performance venue, in part, if you have it there and you have picnic tables there, the majority of how people are going to think about it, other than the six nights a year that you definitely have a band there, is you're going to think about it as a place where people go and have picnics. Most people are not going to see it most of the year as a place that's a performance venue, most people are going to perceive it as a place that you go and bring your friends, have a picnic, have a birthday party. That's how it's probably going to be used the majority of the time if you have a picnic in there. I mean, you will have the command, the band there, and that six nights a year for sure, and if other people want it, but that almost seems like it will be a special use for that pavilion since the majority of the time you have picnic tables, and that's how much people perceive it. That's my two cents. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Wolf? Uh, yeah, I would agree with the uh, previous um, things that have been said about <clears throat> the, the proportion of the, of the views that you will actually have. I think it's a very small part of the year where the building performance space. So, <clears throat> and then probably a smaller proportion of that <clears throat> where the music has not enough to, to uh, disturb the virus. Theater performances, maybe it will be uh, small ensembles uh, to some extent, uh, very quiet music and that. Um, so <clears throat> that's that's a small percentage, I think, of the events that are the most concerned. And I think I can't even imagine an event that would be a parking concern. We have well over 100 parking spaces there. Um, 
that outside of the 4th of July, I don't think any musical uh, event in the, in the town attracts a lot of cars. So I think the, the, the venue is certainly not perfect because it's, it's you know, all the way over almost in Westford. Um, it grows to something in town center, but there isn't anything in town center that works, otherwise you would be using it. So I would, I would agree that here's a chance to do something uh, for the band, for other uh, similar <coughs> organizations uh, that have a need for an outdoor space. And uh, we can do it in a way that uh, opens itself up uh, uh, to lots of other uses, um, like the, the picnic tables and birthday parties that I could see uh, maybe yoga happening in there, um, or just in general, we said, we always said that we need shade structures. So that's, that's probably the primary um, usage of it. We uh, finally have a spot to sit outside of the sun. So uh, I, I think narrowing it down to a performance space is, does not do it justice in, in terms of the percentage that it actually happens over here. So. Previous two speakers, I see it as a town asset. Our town has, you know, dog park, a skate park. I'm not sure how much use those things get. This is a multi-use facility for the picnics, for some performances. And it just seems like this is the park that we have, and we're working on this park now. And it just seems like a real opportunity. So, any can, final comments from you guys? Yeah, can can I ask? Is it possible? To, to pitch it as a general use pavilion and recommend that perhaps the town allow one trial performance by the band to see exactly what effect it, it what, what people think of it? Do you think you could, we could sell that to the, to the abutters to? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. The town would go for it. And then they, and they say that they don't like it, so we built this facility that's just going to sit there? For, for, well, for that would be a uh, very used picnic structure. It's, huge. it's for all the other things, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. In the town surrounding Rochester, almost every town has a large park with two or three of these size structures and with um, the barbecue things set up that are cemented into the ground and we're not breaking, you know, we're not creating the wheel here. Um, a structure like this with picnic tables in a park is going to get used a lot. <laughs> Just. Yeah. So Del, are you saying you, you, we don't need to sell it as a performing station and it, it can be sold completely from that standpoint? It's, I just think that's deceiving to the people that are around there because it's going to get used as a yeah. performance venue. If I just we build go back. I go back venue. to the simple thing: is we don't know. Yes, it's a great thing for the community band, and I think that we all agree in this room. It's what other people have planned there that we don't necessarily know that others are going to have a problem with. And like with the band, they talked. They were talking about food trucks and stuff like that. So if the band brings these food trucks in and maybe theirs seems to go fine and nobody has an issue with it, it becomes that next group that comes in after them that they do something that isn't liked by abutters and everybody else, and that's where my concern is. Oh. Can I just clarify, the food trucks are not contingent on our being... No, 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 I understand, I understand. Okay, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just saying... Times no, 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 my, 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 my only <laughs> point is... My only, no, 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 my only point is... We, w this was originally brought in, or the thoughts were to brought in to, to, to house it for the band for six to eight performances a year, and, in and if it gets DPW. in front of the DPW garage, which is what we talked about before, and they didn't want it there, and so now we're moving into a different side, all those sorts of things, and it's the, it's the things that we don't know, that we're not thinking of, that would wind up there, that that's where I have my concern. So it's no different than if, if we wound up doing asphalt around the walking track. And I realize we haven't gotten there yet, but the, the one thing that uh, was brought to my attention was rollerblades, rollerbladers and, and, and skateboarders on that. That wasn't the intended purpose. But ultimately, if you wind up paving that, that's what you're going to get there. And that's an unintended 
thing that would happen if you wind up going that road. That's, all, that's, my, own, that's my two cents. And that, that's the unintended things that I don't necessarily know or can think of right now. That's where my concern would be. So I just have one more quick point on what I was thinking. The land isn't going to change. So what we're grading and all of that is what it is here. This is a phased out thing anyways. So I don't think there's any hope that this would go very early on in the plan. The town would decide to build this later because of budget reasons, things like that. My question is this, we're, if we keep the site plan as is, and if this doesn't pass tonight, or if it's very split or very close, can this be something that we actually don't tackle ourselves? It doesn't change the land, it doesn't change the positioning of anything in the field. Can they put it either to a ballot question even, or something where you, you say, does the town actually want this? And then we don't have to be the one to decide. The land is there, <laughs> and I just pass the buck on to somebody else, because it's not necessarily getting funded right now anyways. This I think isn't the, something they're building I th tomorrow. I think the uh, master plan is going to be a living document, so, yep. you know, obviously it could be, um, it could be uh, addressed later, but I, mean, I think that we need to... We need to vote on it. I, I want to officially with, vote on it. Uh, with regards to it, yeah. you know. So um, if we ended up voting it down, um, could it come back later if um, the community said they wanted it? Of course it could. Yeah, you know, it's a living document. Um, but I think the chances of taking it out of the plan are probably um, not as good as adding it to the plan after the fact. I think it'd be more difficult to, for the community to remove it from the master plan unless it was a function of town meeting not funding it. Well, I mean, just listening to everybody comment, we're, we're pretty split here. Where we're going to end really? up, we don't know because you're, uh, but just can you make it contingent? Can we say pending town approval, this is a phase three? I think we need to just we need a decision. Stand just up and yeah. decide. Okay, yeah. I, I already know where I'm Tonight. standing. So, <laughs> yeah, sort of along the same line as that. I remember the library. I strongly supported. We had ballot question after ballot question about whether we should have the library as the budget. Tremendous. It's one of the most used resources in this town. And I think that everybody agrees it was a good decision to invest in that. So if there's some way to, uh, to save it without saving. Right. Yeah. I have a friendly amendment to it, and that is to research the um, addition of uh, two walls and a back as um assuming it stays in the plan right we can that that's something we assuming it stays in the plan we can add that to uh we can we can well add I that to the budget think what i'm trying to get to is that by recommending the town address these abutters concerns um then it becomes a more palatable or um, a more more approvable plan. Barry, may I do that because you, you, you're talking something that I'm thinking too. I don't know what the mechanics of this might be if it's even new, but you go forward, you prove it. We know the town um, can establish restrictions, and we could recommend extremely tight restrictions. And with those restrictions somehow, and this is the part I don't know how you do it, um, could be made extremely tight and then uh, relieved over time with the approval of the butters. The butters. In other words, as, as usage proved that the things that we said tonight, that the majority of the use wasn't for loud noise, um, and that, that the performances themselves were not really creating a problem for the butters. That the abutters would have input um, to the way the town, you know, allowed additional performances to go on. But initially, might constrain it to just the six performances for the, for the town band, and that's it. And just say, uh, until we play this out uh, and get, get clearance from the abutters in agreement, that we, that we keep it very tight. That obviously is a risk. It's a risk of putting $100,000 in the budget for something that doesn't um, ever materialize in you know, those performances. Any other comments, Jim? I've got a 
I'm looking at this, and, and I think there's two things. One is, is the pit and purveying worthwhile and viable? I think that's my question. The other question is the band. Now, right now, if somebody decided they wanted to put a performance on, they showed up with some portable generators and amplifiers and went out there and held the performance without bandstand, what's the difference? You're giving them some electrical power and that's about it. Yeah. And if it gets to be an annoyance, you can turn the electrical off. Yeah. Any other comments? So when when this when you present when this is presented at the, the to the board of selectmen to the town meeting, um, is that that's also I, I assume an open to the public meeting, or is it right? So so there would be opportunity for people to to voice their their objections directly to the board of selectmen. Sure. That. But do the board of selectmen vote on the whole plan or just exactly? Part? That was oh, my next. They, they could they could say we don't like this part and take this part out. Okay, that was that was what I was getting at. It's, it's their governing documents. So they can do whatever, make up whatever changes that they want. Okay. Question: Are we able to actually set the restrictions, or are we just voting right now on whether we're going to build it and that, whether the band's going to play? Is, are we just like voting on everything at once, or are we voting on like being built, the band, it's budget? And really, it, it's just whether it goes in our budget. Well, right? we could we could always recommend that restrictions be made, and I would mm -hmm. I would. I would say we should um, legal department. If we vote I, mean, I understand for it. like the multi-purpose, and I see like maybe birthday parties, that kind of stuff. Like it has a lot of benefits, and even the band. But my fear is just the the unknown. What Bill said earlier. Any other comments? If we vote it down, I was going to recommend we move one of the pavilions out of the playground yep. and put it where this is that's identical to the one on the other side. But that's not a, that's not, if we vote it down, that's where I was going to go. And then use just one in the playground, one outside the playground, and then use the trees as shade structure for the rest of the seating in the playground, picnic tables and things like that. So are you guys ready to take a vote? <laughs> are we just voting on whether it's being built, I guess is yeah. my question. So what I would suggest is that we vote, um, the first thing that we do is vote for accepting that the bandstand be included in the master plan, that the, this particular multi-use pavilion be included. And then if we do include it, I think if there's other recommendations we want to we include, we, discuss those and, and then those will be discussed and voted on at the next meeting with the master plan, right? Because it'll be part of the recommendation. Call for the vote. I move that we accept the provision of a picnic pavilion bandstand uh, into the budget for the uh, Roberts Field. As listed here. As listed here. I second that. All those in favor? <laughs> All opposed? No. So it fails. All right. Um, the walking trail and exercise circuit. Um, 
this is the interior six foot wide permeable well sorry excuse me six foot wide asphalt walking trail track um, with the ringed um, permanent exercise circuit stations um, and then we also have two shorter four foot wide permeable pathways in the forest loop and then pond side um, the expectations are that all of these pathways are going to be ADA compliant um, we would relocate the six existing exercise stations and then we need to do some repairs on on some of those three of those actually now barbell leg press and then the, um, there's another one that has some needs some paint um, add four new stations that would specifically be beneficial for seniors um, parallel bars mobility balance stations stretch stations and elliptical machines um, add rubber mats for each of the stations so you don't get the the burnout underneath like it's uh, listed there or shown there um, and then um, address the path locations to adjust it for the, the designated inventory trees that we still need to go back and take a vote on. So this is a $54,000 to $57,000 budget. Um, one of the suggestions that we talked about was changing the asphalt to um, the um, Roma Pack or Crusher Fines permeable path. Um, is there any discussion on that? Do we even need a discussion? Do you guys have any discussion on that? Do you want to call for a vote on Call that? for a vote on switching. So changing the asphalt to the permeable Roma pack slash crusher finds pathway. I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So I'll make the change to the budget as, uh, as that as well. Can I ask one question to Steve? Um, Steve, one thing. You, you walked out right at your most important part, actually. We, we just voted down your asphalt. Um, <laughs> do you need to drive a truck on this to get to the garbage cans? OK. That was originally what we had, we had said that we were going to use But we shortened the road, and then we... And we just, yeah, that got, that expectation got taken okay, out of just here. just making yep. sure, yep. Good. As long as it's ADA compliant. Good. Okay. Any other, any comments? Questions? No? Um, can I get a, can I get a uh, motion to Motion to accept, accept the addended... With the permeable path with instead the permeable. of the asphalt? Yep. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's unanimous. Um, portable bathroom enclosure. Uh, this is basically a shade structure um, with a bench seating for diaper changing that's going to house two um, handicap sized accessible bathrooms. Um, some walls, but would have visibility. So if it's a, if it's a metal screen or um, some sort of wood lattice. Um, a nearby garbage can and bike rack, and then located in the front of the park next to the parking lot. Um, right there. Yeah. Any questions or comments? You want to go straight to vote? Yeah. You have a motion to vote? Motion to vote. Seconds? Second. You have a comment? No. Okay. I was okay. going to say <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Hardscape play area. This is the uh, hardscape play area adjacent to the um, fire station, which is right in here. Um, it would include um, one basketball court, one basketball half. hoop, excuse me, half a basketball court. Um, it would also have four, uh, painted games on the hardscape like uh, Foursquare and Snakes and Ladders. Um, it have nearby bike racks and a garbage can, um, and then also have a park rules and sign. And the budget here is eighteen thousand to twenty-one thousand. I I thought we were going with the one that's at East, the basketball pole that had like the kind of netting in it, and it would also prevent the balls from rolling out a little bit better. What happened with that? That wasn't mine. That was a picture of the one that they had at Harmony, but that, from my perspective, I don't support that. But um, oh, because you're worried about people it. playing hockey on the. Well, hockey plus um, the visibility of it, it's a big structure, so yeah. it's, um, it's one of those, it's more about visibility for me, but that's something we can all discuss. I, I'm, not, I'm not sold on it, I just thought that's what we were going with. I, 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 it would just stop the balls a little easier, too, from going anywhere else, but it's not a huge deal for me. Any comments or discussion? Um, I would like to see added some way of, um, if we're all, it's only going to be one net adjusting that, so that... There can be uh, chair hoops because uh, the height of the hoop for that is much lower, or that 
whatever we use is something that a, a portable net can then be added to by you know some people who want to use it in that way. I don't, I've never seen anything like that, so I don't really I'm not really familiar with that. I just I don't have any experience with yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, the, the adjustables that that I've seen like for kids that are different sizes, I think that's probably a maintenance nightmare for those guys. I don't think they would yeah. do that in the par in a public space because they just break too much. In the yeah. Bar. Um, but then, then you'd have teenagers dunking on it. Yeah, you bed. exactly. You would you would you would roll it down to six feet and then you'd start to. Yeah. As, as a teenager that dunked on an eight foot rim, that's what would happen. But um, there are specific um, nets for wheelchair games. Um, and I only discovered that watching something on TV the other day. Uh, and it would allow us to meet more of the universal access. I, I would just say, I mean, I'm not trying to take away from that side. I mean, we're trying to make the playground really universal. This, this was an add-on. Okay. It really was like this isn't the primary purpose of the park at all, and it's, it, it, which is, I, I, in my aspect, we're trying to keep this as minimal as possible, and it's just a, it was it was originally thrown in for older kids who didn't want to watch their yes, brother for play baseball. Your old brother didn't that didn't want to watch. Yeah, his I, seven I, I wasn't around. even sold on the idea of putting it in there, but everybody seemed to like it, so I was there. But I I, okay. I don't think that we, we're in a place, and it, it's in a place in the park that we can really make it a true accessible and, and really targeted towards that. If okay. we want to do that, I think we should do it. They should propose it for one of the more the, the actual courts in the in the in the town. I don't know that this is the like at the high school. Yeah, or somewhere yeah. somewhere else because this is I mean, it's a half hoop. It's a half net and it's okay. multi-purpose. It's a good thought though. Del. Yeah, I, I mean, I Thank see you where you're going. That perspective. Just, Any other comments? Any other comments? Um, one thing that I would like to ask, and um, just so it's officially on the record, if uh, you could reach out to the art department to see if they'd be willing to do, um, yeah, when you get home. Sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, is there a motion to uh, vote on this? Somebody has to I have a motion to vote. <laughs> Wait, motion to accept. I'll second it. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the upper and lower parking deck changes. Um, this is uh, changing the striping from uh, the vertical to the slanted. Um, it goes from 93 spaces to 113 spaces, um, three handicapped parking spaces. Then we have that land bank area um, adjacent to Old Westford Road right here. So that's on the plan if we need to add a few more spaces later on. Um, the new painted lines, I mentioned that. Um, new wooden guardrails, so there'd be guardrails here, here, and then they'd also replace the guardrails on the um, Old Westford Road. Right, Steve? Those are all getting changed? No, that's not getting changed? Okay, so just the wooden guardrails here and here then, on top. Um, stained white wood rails, so those would match the, the, the fencing on Old Westford Road and Westford Street. Um, we'd, we would maintain the access points to the field that are currently there so that um, they would be able to allow stretchers to move back and forth from med flight. Um, we would establish um, that green area in between the upper and lower parking lot. Right now it's all grass. It would be hydro seeded with um, the perennial flowering mix to create a flowering meadow from side to side. Um, we'd replace the existing Roberts Field sign that's um, flaking now. And we would block all the field access entry points from the parking lot. So right now you can drive onto the field um, from pretty much anywhere around here. So all that stuff would be blocked on the side. So the only access point to the field would be around the back of Engine 3 and onto the field here by the uh, hardscape area. So that's a $15,000 to $21,000 budget. Any questions or comments? Um. Uh, this is me doing things that isn't my job, but I'm going to bring it up again anyways. I really don't see how we do vertical lines on the top parking lot. I drive there. I just don't see getting in and out of that spot, making the 90 degree curve to make it in there. I mean, I don't, now that we don't have the bandstand in there, do we need the extra spots? Can we still at least have it in the plan that we're going to look at it again when we do it? 
because I just worry that it's, it's going to be a traffic it's nightmare. Standard, it's standard planning. planning um, I mean, that's what it's I the kind know. of it's just spaces that are in everything that the town does, right? Maybe you can't drive. Maybe I can't. I don't know. I've had others <laughs> agree with me, though, that, that it wasn't there. I mean, it wasn't just me. This was brought up by the public, too, but uh, I think you brought it up, didn't you? Or just I totally agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> I, somebody supports me. Um, anyways, yeah, I, I agree I as well. I turned into another car the other day when I was. I just, I, I don't know. I, it, it just, if it's not, it's not. I don't care. I just, I'm looking at it now that they're they're two different sizes. I know on the map they're not, but it just doesn't seem right. So are they the same widths? <laughs> they, they're on the map sideways? it says they're the exact same width. Yeah, yeah. It's just the, the, on the map it says the upper lower parking lot and the lower parking lot are the exact same width. I mean, twenty-four in, width size, right? Yeah, yeah, the aisle width. In the end, yeah. it may actually end up being safer because you're you're pulling. It's a one way, right? So you're pulling in and backing out, sort of a yeah. Um, versus having to go around and then, you know what I mean? When you're pulling into a a vertical space, you kind of have to go around and then swing out and then and then swing back and then. Safer versus. going in, it's worse going out. But that's. But if you're if you're at an angle, then it could be. And the bottom line is that it's the same. Okay. So I just had I had to bring it up one last time. I'm done. <laughs> it is going to cost you parking spaces to, to, to angle. No, you gain. You gain. No, we're going the other way. We're going the other way. That's right. what the other way is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now we're going vertical. You're going vertical. That's what you're Yeah. 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 I was just yeah. I was gonna say if you went back to the angle. No, it's not angled now. Now it's vertical, right? So we're so saying it's gonna be. No, it's angled. It's angled today. It, the top's angled. The bottom. The top's angled. The bottom is vertical. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, other comments? No. <laughs> Leave it as this. It's fine. Can you uh, since can, can you give me a um, motion to accept? Thank you. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, I should abstain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, the driveway area behind Engine Three. Um, so this was this is basically repairing the the drainage issue um, in the back of Engine Three on that corner, um, adding um, drainage into a new rain garden, and the rain garden is a budget item in the natural area improvement budget, um, and then it's also fixing that. Um, uh, head wall on that swale um, on the top the top um, picture here and then fixing the uh, asphalt here and that's a two to three thousand dollar job any comments or questions two to three thousand dollars uh, can I have a motion to accept motion to accept second. second thank you all in favor aye aye um, the parks garage so this actually has um, a mix of budget items and recommendations in it. Um, repair the garage roof, replace the windows and doors, uh, grade and seed the perimeter, add gutters that would drain into a garden in the back, and then we're going to need to take out the interior partition walls for the band storage, so I'll have to adjust the budget that way. Um, the garage will be used for storage. I, I also sent a um, uh, email to the emergency management um, people asking if they wanted to share their concerns and issues with the garage and I didn't get a response back. Um, but from my understanding they're going to be the ones that are going to be primarily using the interior for storage. Um, recommendation that uh, no hazardous materials be stored inside the garage because of the proximity to the park. Um, no temporary storage on the outside of the park including trailers and buildings. Um, no materials separated or stored outside of the garage. And then I mentioned the gutter drainage to a rear um, garden and then um, grading and seeding that area around the garage. And that's a, the budget's gonna change um, by $5,000. I think it's three to five, is it three to, I think it's 5,000 to 5,500. So it'll, it'll be a little lower. It'll be 15 to 23. Okay. Any motion. questions or comments? Terry? Um, now that we've voted out the, uh, the bandstand, um, is the storage for the band um, still makes sense? No, you no, just no, took that out. Took we took that out. We took it out. Sorry. That's okay. I need to adjust the budget down. It'll be about 5000 to 5500 less. Any comments? Can I get a motion to approve? Can, can we change Sorry. it to prefer no temporary storage? 
we can make any recommendation we want. <laughs> I mean, I just... We're not going to ticket I, the DPW to, anyways. What's that? <laughs> We're not going to exactly ticket the DPW no, if they leave I know, something out there. I, I, I think that... I don't want to hamstring them with if they needed to put something there for a few days or whatever because we put huh. this in here. Huh. I'm fine with the wording only because I think that they're going to... Do what they want anyway. Do what they want yeah. anyways, and I think that <laughs> I think enough. the stronger wording we could be, the better, less likely Steve's going to leave junk outside. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> In all honesty, it's good. It'll have nothing to do with me. Yeah, it'll be the emergency manager. Yeah. I mean, the goal is to 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 keep it from becoming what it was once, yes. which is um, there was a storage locker thing yeah. there, and yeah, and I mean there was a lean-to in the back, and yep. I mean it was uh, it was even more of a nice war than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> we want them to fix the roof and make it nice and yeah, and yeah. 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 So any other um, so can I get a motion to uh, motion to accept as written? Oh with the, the budget addendum. Uh, with the budget amended. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the park welcome community area. So this is the area that is. Um, Sir Barry dying here. There it is. This is this little triangular area right here. There's a welcome sign here, and then um, the walkways through there. There's a a garden, and we also have um, a budget for a carved rock. Um, some sort of carved rock um, sign room. and slash seating that people could actually sit on. Um, some sort of rock seating um, that people could sit on <coughs> and the gardens and then the um, <coughs> labyrinth oh, in that area okay. as well. And um, the information kiosk. Oh, and then the, um, um, the covered bridge over the uh, little bridge leading to the, what is now the vacant store. Any questions or comments? Does this have to make men explicit mention of um, uh, whatever easements would have to be obtained? Or, or is then some of the small print somewhere? Well, uh, the joint project approval with the abutter in town, that okay. was meant to cover okay. that, but yeah. it could be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry. Yeah. OK. Any other comments or questions? Can I get a motion to accept as written? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The natural park area improvements. Um, the biggest thing here is dredging the pond. Um, that's hundred to hundred thirty thousand um, dollars. That would be done um, like everything else. Um, that the town would be in charge of when that would be actually implemented, and that would that would be implemented in the, a drier year. Um, installing a flashboard type water dam that leads to that swale along the side of. Uh, of engine three to help keep the water level high when it needs to be. Um, the DPW cleaning out the areas overrun with bittersweet and other invasive plants and shrubs, um, both in the area um, here, 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 and then along the edge of the park as well um, to widen out towards the to widen out for the, the walking track. Um, there's a lot of uh, invasive uh, Russian olives and uh, shrubbery in there too. So that's, that would be cleared out as well. Um, the addition of the interpretive nature trails, which um, there's a sort of a, a key S card there that sort of shows what it would, what it would look like and there'd be um, um, a, a, an information kiosk to have information about it and it would include the nature walk, scavenger hunt rules, lists, trees of plants and animals and track imprints. Um, two small sign directional signs for the front and the back of the park to direct people to the nature trails. Um, the plant and sound, the plant sound mitigation um, landscaping that we talked about adjacent to the playground, which is here. And then a pond side swale garden, which would be right in this area, right here. And that's in a, a lower area on the, on the pond side of the walking trail. And this is a 122 to $156,000 budget, primarily because of the, uh, the dredging. Any comments or questions? Jim? Yeah, uh, could you post on the website uh, that little video we did about what it takes to control or, or attack some of the bittersweet? 
Sure. We went, I don't know if you folks saw it or not, but we went out and I think within 15 minutes, we cleared out around one of the trees. We left the material up at the top, but you don't have to take the trees down to get to the bittersweet. Okay, we have to. Barry, if you could load that up to YouTube, I can link to it. Any other comments or questions? I just want to make sure the dredging of the ponds. Um, I, I worry that it's going to be, I, I, I'm starting to be swayed, so that's good, but I worry that it's going to be just such a big ticket item. It's going to hurt the overall master plan, the, the dollar value we're asking for. I just want to make sure, however we present it, and as long as the committee, that we're presenting this as a environmentally needed project in the future that we're asking them to to start thinking about budgeting for. And it has to. It's in our master plan. We want to see it done, but we don't need to see it done in the next even probably two years. It could be done in five years. We we know that in 15 years, estimated, the pond's going to be gone. What's the what would, what would be the advantage of positioning it that way? Um, just so we don't. It, 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 we're not walking in looking for a million dollars and they're like this is way too expensive a project overall as you said the sticker shock of the project the playground may get approved I'm just worried that if we if we make it too much it's gonna pull back from a lot of the other improvements getting done too because the total dollar value is still so high it is a big ticket and it is a big ticket that seems like it, it is needed but it is needed as a as a late phase of the project it's not needed as a early, like the walking trails could go in, the pavilions could go in, the fields could get moved, and then the, dred the pond can get dredged, and we st it would still be okay. The pond would still be there at that point, if it happened in four years, let's say, if the town budgeted, so chose to do it. I know we're not telling the pond how, uh, telling the town how to implement the plan, because that's their job, but I, if, we do, if we vote on it and we all agree, or we don't all agree, but we, we voted to pass it, I just want to make it clear that we're not I worry about just asking for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You think it should be a, a separate line item, apart from well, the natural, natural park improvements, area improvements. I'm hoping that they'll see that the signs can happen without this happening and all of that. I just don't want, I don't want to see the walking trail get hung up because it all gets tied into improvements in the, in the in the park. You know what I mean? Like that's we got to be clear that it's it's a later on thing that it, it's important but it's not important today it's important for the future of the park is where I'm kind of getting I hear what you're saying I don't necessarily agree yeah. so um, I, I mean I think I think we leave from my perspective I think we leave it up to Steve and the town to find the driest period that's going to allow it to be dredged um, and I honestly think that it's probably in my <laughs> way of thinking you know, from people I've talked to think it's one of the most important priorities of the park because if it's not dredged out and we lose the pond that's gonna that that is like a huge blow to the park in general you know it's a um, Roberts Field without the pond is not Roberts Field it's not nearly the same thing so my way of thinking about it is that it really is actually a, a pretty important part but I'm, I'm I don't want to put a priority on it because I feel like that's that's better dictated by the town to implement. Yep. I, I kind of think of it as necessary maintenance also. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, obviously, it's it's going to be phased, but and it has to be timed with a with with a dry period. And uh, maybe it'll be dry enough that we don't have to dredge and just. I mean, I hear what you're saying. Honestly, the feedback that I've gotten from people is is that uh, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's a necessary evil. So. It, it's necessary to preserve a key feature of this park. Um, that's that's not just nice to look at. It's not just nice for nature, but it's also used. It's one of the only things in the park that's really used in the winter when it's freezing. Right. Yeah. That is that's what people go there for. I what I've read is that there really aren't any other ponds that people would go to to skate on within Chelmsford. And maybe that was just a comment that was in some of the comments that were received earlier in this whole process. But, you know, it, it's definitely used um, in the winter for that and, and helps with the, the nature within the park. That we're trying to preserve um, the natural elements back behind with the owls and the frogs and all of that. Any other comments? 
Okay, can I get a motion to approve as is? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we change the picture? We're not irrigating it anymore, right? Uh, the fountain? It's, the irrigation is in the, is oh, in is the budget. Yeah, do you, you want to? Okay, no, no, that's fine. I didn't think you had it in there. I thought you took it out. I didn't see it on the line. That's all. That's fine. It's, um, yes, it's in the, it's, uh, there's, there's actually two oh, it's pounds the, of uh, It's the second one. Okay, that's fine. Safety improvements. And this is the last, um, the last thing, second to last thing we have to vote on. Um, install security cameras and underground utilities. Uh, the expectations are that there would be three security cameras with an upgraded server, the video feed to CPD dispatch, and then moving the park utility wires underground um, per CPD. Um, and we are at 23 to 29,000. Any questions? I just wondered, are there security cameras at the other parks in Johnsburg? I mean, this doesn't have to, I, I mean, I, I don't know, but maybe this is driven by the police and they particularly need to hear. I just, I am curious, it's this natural park. I don't remember seeing security cameras at other parks in town, I could be wrong. But they don't have them now, and I'm just wondering. Our pod has some right now. Yeah, I think that's mine like that. Again, I don't want to see them. <laughs> yeah, that's how secure they are. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Uh, can I get a motion to approve? Is this written? So moved. Second. 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 And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Aye. Um, Let's say the the recommendation can stuff. I, for, yes. Can I make a motion to, or or just put it out there because we I, we didn't vote on it. We took away the bandstand. Do we want to put like I had mentioned before? Do we want to move one of the pavilions outside the park? Because, or do we want to not? Because that's what I. We can certainly discuss that. Sure. Yeah, anybody else thinking that? I think we move one of the same exact thing on the other side. We put there, gives people a place to sit. And they take one of the ones out of the playground area. How big are the ones in the um, in the playground Smaller, area? Smaller, twelve by ten. They're right there. Uh, they're twelve by twelve. That's the yeah. the budgeted uh, sizes of twelve by twelve. Yeah. I would actually recommend against that, just because of what I've seen at the Kids Connection playground. They have a gazebo, in, essentially um, centered, mm -hmm. and that's where the, the parents sit. Um, a because of the shade, um, but also be, it gives the, that 360 view of you know what the kids are doing, uh, especially when you have one, more than one age child. Um, this park also has a lot of seating built in, like um, uh, old deacons benches kind of thing, but along one of the walls in the shade. I'm not against leaving the ones in the play. I just thought it would be too many structures, but I'm not against leaving the ones in the playground if that's what people want to do. I'm just more for a picnic area outside the playground area on that side of the park. So there's one on each side of the park. But don't you have picnic tables on the inside? They're all on the inside of the thing. But yeah, I'm more saying? thinking you're, I don't know. Yeah, but, then, but then if you want them to picnic, they can go to the other side. And one of the things that we had talked about is kind of making sure that people use the whole park. Yeah. And so if somebody really wanted to do a, a, you know, a bigger picnic, then they, they could go, go to the, to the other side. side. And That's my thoughts. On yeah. That. And then I think if, you know, if, if you're, a, if you're a family and you've got kids playing baseball and then kids playing in the playground, you're probably going to want to sit inside the playground because those are going to probably be your younger kids, I would guess. Mm -hmm. So having yeah. the, having a shade structure picnic pavilion inside the playground, it would limit who would use it, but then people could, if you wanted to picnic and not be inside the playground, you could go to the other side. Yeah, I just, I mean, we just heard like everybody saying how wonderful it would be to have a enormous house-sized picnic pavilion that got used the majority of the year right in that position, and as soon as the band went away, now we don't need the picnic pavilion anymore. <laughs> but you still, you, but you still, you still <laughs> have, no, this you still one have that one there, and that's. Uh, I just think what, uh, four uh, tables can fit under that. Is yeah. what we're talking about. This one's four, yeah. That one's four. That one's four. The other yeah. one's two. The other one's comfortably. Okay. I think you could probably squeeze three if you had to. Yeah. Um, Hi, sorry. Now, if if oh. you do put something there with the with the um, pavilion lower down was. You wipe out any possibility of the pavilion coming back in the future. And what I thought I heard from you guys and the audience is I think we're all kind of hoping maybe we could mm -hmm. 
get our act together and get that thing back into the plan down the road, but that we had to vote it out for tonight. Am I saying that accurately? Well, that's some, of the, some of us definitely feel that yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's So just that's the point. If okay, you know, so we'll put plan. something else in there, it's yeah. now you really wiped out that opportunity. No. Yep. I'm fine. Yeah. I just. Yeah, I, and I, I kind of feel like, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
when the details of this get implemented, I, I would assume if, if the implementers come back and say, look, we absolutely have to do something with this tree or else you've got to give us another 100,000 to complete. Then there's a decision to be made, right? At that point. In other words, we're not going to give cut cut blanche to a, a developer of this or an implementer to go start cutting down a tree. I mean, the rule should be keep the trees protected, and then you come back to us or one of the committees at the time if you've got a tree that you really have any problems working around. It looks like the, the red ones that you laid out on the map are the ones that uh, you pretty much figured out would be the ones most likely. By giving them the town this color-coded thing, we've given our recommendation. That we, haven't, we haven't discussed any of it, though. We haven't talked about any of this stuff yet. So that's what the committee needs to say. You know, yeah, this, um, you know, <laughs> this is important or this isn't important. This is important. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so is is this an important one? Saying, Bill, but, but can't make I'm not decision. standing there looking at these trees, feeling emotional about keeping one versus the other. But Katie's got to go and design the walking track. I understand. I understand and, what you're saying, and but push I just the, don't know push that this. we're in a position so how, where we can yeah, really yeah. say very specifically that one tree, number 59 should be preserved over 58. Yeah. I, I can't say that right no, now. I, don't think I could say, I, I think we should work hard to preserve the bigger trees because as Jim has, has said, these trees take a long time to grow. Yep. You know, the bigger the crown on that tree, the more shade it's throwing off. Shade is worth a lot of money. We know how much that's worth because of the pavilions. I am in favor of saving as many as we can. So then, all the trees. Wait. So all the trees. So all the trees that are in yellow with red rings, are we in agreement that we should designate those as protected trees? No. You give them the designation no. just no. like these guys. No. So no. so I think that the, the problem is is the wording is that is that what we mean by protected trees is is what this that's what we need to decide honestly I think is that is that the wording under protected trees needs to be these are trees that wherever possible the plan should be designed around these trees and the trees should be protected when the plan so this fencing should be put up and the you should keep the root structure there and everything should be done and we should define that as much as possible. And so the but short list they, of those, the short list of those trees is the yellow trees with the red ring. With the, but those right. are the trees that we're talking about. Like I can tell you right now, 58 and 59, yeah, you can move the trail to the other side, but the other ones are harder to say. What's behind them? Can the trail go behind? We don't know. And, and until you're on the ground, I can't make that decision. And it, 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 it's impossible for us to sit here and qualify all of these trees. I mean, the only ones any of us probably know really well are the ones in the playground. Well, and the big number 12 that, right. that he cut the roots, well, the things off of, the branches well, off of. Well, well, <laughs> well but, but for instance, you, you can look at this and say that where you plan on putting the berm, those trees are going to be killed by the berm, right? I mean... The, the, I, I can't read the numbers, I'm sorry, I don't have, my glasses aren't, aren't good enough. It's a little small, yeah. yeah. These guys. Yeah, those guys. Right. Unless I, you build around them. Yeah, well, that defeats the, then you get a no. drainage issues and defeats so, the purpose of but, the berm, but, kind of. So then those that are in the berm should be, should be red. No, I don't know how that works and what they're going to. Well, this was my, right, this was my point. Are we talking about, if we say we're not going to protect those trees, does it preclude us from just leaving them and treating them as carefully as possible while also building that berm and understanding that the work done around them may negatively impact them, but we'd like to do, you know, like to keep them if they survive? I mean, I, I don't know, Jim. If, is that a possibility well, that you I could? If I could. Yeah. Some of them, it's just a matter of rerouting the the sidewalk and keeping the the walkway outside the protected zone. Mm -hmm. This one, you're probably going to have to, the des designer of the playground is going to have to make a decision. Can it fit or can't fit? I'd like to see it kept. My problem is, well, no offense, man, a lot of designers like to come in and lay a clean slate. The easiest thing, cut everything down, and then we start. That's what I get very concerned about. Okay? I realize it's probably going to have to be a trade-off. 
But the idea of having people just walk in and, oh, let's cut everything down. And we've already seen that on the clean out of the bittersweet. Trees were taken down that were alive, fairly good condition. For what reason? I don't know. But they were taken down. This big guy here, I really think, should be kept. That's number 12? The big oak. OK. Yeah. Yeah. No. Can you point on the other map, which is bigger, please? I'm sorry? The one over on the right. Can it's you use the map yeah. on the on the right mm -hmm. side of the screen? Oh, okay. It's just slightly this bigger. This one here, number 12, yeah. that's a big oak. OK. I, I, you know, I think it's a valuable tree. Good condition. I'd really like to see it. These two here, of course, again, swing the sidewalk away from them. No problem at all. The same thing with these guys up here. Mm -hmm. Just keep the, the grading and the sidewalk away from them. You know, it, instead of having a straight line, you might have to have a little dipsy do, mm -hmm. which actually makes the walkway more interesting than having yeah. the interstate. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize before that these guys really don't show as being protected. No, they, no. So yellow. But they're yellow. yellow. No, the yellow is the highest protection. Be Everything in solid these yellow is. Yeah. yeah. These guys here, again, you take them down. They're part of your mitigation right now. So you're taking a, an existing tree down to put a smaller tree in that sometime in the future you might get some value up. I think you got to think about that. Okay. Now, there's also techniques that can be used to protect them. There are ways of, of working around them to protect them. Hmm. But yes, I think, you know, decisions have to be made. Hopefully, they will be made sensibly. So if, if what you're saying is that anyone, any one of those with a red circle around it, because that's what we really are, are discussing here, the, the red circle yellows, not the, not the total reds. If you're saying there's a way to work around these, even the ones that look like they're, they're sort of right in the berm, that that berm can still be built because, you know, we, I feel I like we made a promise. You can accommodate if the there needs. are ways that that can be accommodated, then I would say, yeah, I would, hmm. I would say, all right, let's you say know, so any of those. Can you solid right? berm? Or can you stop, have an open space, and then start again? Or do you move it around? So I, I think we would say wherever possible, any of those red circle trees should be should be protected as per the tree protection guidelines. I think we already said that's, that's, that's what we, said. That's what we yeah. already said. Right. I, think, I think that, it, like I said before, it all just comes into the wording. We've yeah. defined these trees as trees where possible to protect, so it's just how we word it there. And then they have to design where possible around it. But I'm going to tell you right now, and you already know this, they're not all going to be protected. Some of these are going to be, like if you look at number 62, just an example, it's huge. Hopefully we can design around it, but that's a big tree right near a baseball field. That? Yeah. That, that? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's on the. 62 is actually on the property lines, I believe. Yeah, I is agree. It? Yeah. The problem is GPS and land surveying don't play nice together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but that doesn't. So there's some. I don't think that's really. If there's. That really should probably be over here. But that, that just right takes away from us even, even thinking about making any decisions. If these circles aren't dead on the plan, then what are we talking about? Well, I think somebody's going to have to go outside into the field and take a look at it. Yeah, but, but, but we have to are vote. Some adjustments. Yeah. Unfortunately, probably Barry and I should have walked this property line and adjusted the, with his GPS unit to adjust the property line yeah. with the plan. I'm, I'm still in favor of just getting the wording on the plan correctly so we save as many as we can, as Bill said, and, and that's how we go. And we, and we know what we're supposed to do to save them. We would definitely, if this gets approved, then you should be involved in trying to pitch the, the ways to design the berm to the, to, the, to the execution of it, too, because if there are ways to go around it and to design the berm, great, but, but we're not going to design the berm tonight. We're going to decide 
whether or not we're protecting the trees or not. And I think we're all in favor of protecting the trees we can. It's just a question of the wording on what we say. And I don't want to see either side. I don't want to see the trees get clear cut, but I also don't want to see the project get stopped for one tree that, that is, is, is just not movable because of the way we wrote something. So Chris, to your point, let me just propose the words. The trees are protected. End of story. Now, when the designer comes in to work and I say, uh, we've got a problem here because you're asking, we can't, can't do this. Then you deal with it. No. Designate, this tree, the, the designate these trees as protected and the design time when they really but we don't know who the committee is going to, we don't know right. if there's going to be a committee right. to answer to. We don't know who they go to to ask the question if it kept, because we're not involved anymore. Okay. As of the 31st, well, we're gone. Well, oh. Somebody has to make a decision, but who is it? Sorry, I got to play lawyer here. In terms of small uh, municipal government and drafting, if you say they must be preserved, that doesn't give the town any leeway. Uh, to do anything with the trees. What we designate is three categories of trees. On the design, the ones with solid red with a yellow circle, um, the, the committee has no opinion as to whether they are kept or not. The ones with yellow with the red circle are preferred to be maintained and protected. Uh, and the yellow and yellow with no ring are protected all cost. Yeah. That makes sense. Are there any um, individual trees that you'd like to see um, either taken out of the red, no opinion on, or no, out no, of I, the. I, 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 and, and by the way, there are more trees in here that we didn't even, uh, even put on here. So they're fair game, yeah. you know. I'm not, I'm not a purist. I'm not <laughs> trying to save everything. I'm trying to save the better ones. Yeah. So there's a lot of trees in here that we take them down. Okay. Are there any that are? Um, Use them to create play structures. Mm -hmm. Are there any that are yellow with red circles that um, you'd like to see changed to yellow to protect? Well, I, I'd really like to see. Uh, what about 62? This big guy, well, I've got a weakness for here. These are butternuts, which is a very rare tree. I've been in the business, I haven't seen one in 40 years. There was a disease going around that's wiping them out. They used to be fairly common, they're not now. So, those. And, and those. Do do you worry about these trees getting diseased, or are they it, far It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know, it's kind of like cancer. Everybody hopes it doesn't happen. It does. You can't worry about it. Why don't we make those yellow? No. I mean, we that's fairly easy to make that decision because it, it's easy. It looks as if Well, so that's easy. my worry. It looks, I would say the same thing. You move the path over, you're fine. But, but if the GPS is off, then we're <laughs> making an assessment on something we don't have. Right. I mean... Well, if there are two green circles, which I think are trees that would be added, I'm not sure if that's if no, I'm well, reading that correctly. I but, but I think these went in before these were not. Right. So, so if, if they, those were trees that would be planted, no, and you can just say, well, we'll you know we'll reroute inside of those trees or no. outside of those trees. No. If there's a compelling reason to keep a tree, so for instance, it's a very unusual specimen. They're in good health in a situation where these types of trees tend to be They're dying out. They're reasonably good health. Right. <laughs> They're loaded with better nut or better sweet. So mm -hmm. you've, mentioned, survive. you've mentioned 12 and 62. What about these here? Those are far enough away from the, thi from yeah, the well, walking trail. And I know th these three no, are. I don't know, one of those three white pines. And then, you know, I'd like to see them stay, but uh, this is a black cherry. You know, I'm trying to give you some priorities. You can't save everything. I understand that but the priorities. Yeah. But over here, I think just scooching that uh, walkway just outside of the root zone is probably all that's necessary. All right. So, other than 12 and 62, are there any others that you guys want to remove the red rings from? So 58 and 59. Mm -hmm. But the butternuts, right? I don't the you don't. These two? Yeah. 58, 59? Yep. Right. 
Yeah, maybe throw 62 in. That's a nice. Yeah. That's your large. That's, nice, that's that large. That's your large tree. tree right yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And then we have a European larch, which is very unusual. I know it's not native and whatever, but how that thing ever got stuck <laughs> out in that woods, I have no idea. There has to be a story behind it someplace. And it's a good sized tree, too. All right. So I have Just, a 12, but, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, okay, so now we're making a recommendation, 12, 58, 59, 62, 63. Uh, <laughs> Chris, I'm just around. dying here because we don't know where these trees are and we're, we're, we know where they are, but we don't know exactly where they are. And you're talking about putting them in a yellow, which is now our highest classification of keep. And 62 is huge. For me, I put these trees into two classifications. And I think there are four trees that we clearly need to cut down in order to make room for the baseball fields. Mm -hmm. As for every other tree, I think it's best if we leave it open that if they need to cut it down for whatever reason, then but try and save it. Or, yeah, or is there any of that's That's where I get it. If, they, if there is a compelling reason, a right. design reason right. that cannot be overcome. Right. I mean, then, I, okay. we haven't even talked about the playground, but for example, if they deem that tree eight needs to come out because of the way yeah. that they want to design the playground. Well, right now we're basically saying, no, you got to design the playground a different way for one tree. That seems silly to me. Well, you know, I've, I've worked with designers, I've worked with architects, engineers, landscape architects in my professional career. And as far as I'm concerned, the good ones will take it and we've got something here and they will, tr they will make a negative into a positive. They will save it and incorporate it rather than the old, well, let's clear everything off and we'll give you something that's not very interesting, but it's there. Well, that's, I think that's what we're saying. We want to save as many as we possibly yeah. can, and I think we should leave it that way and, and basically list them as, in my opinion, there are only two, two things. We can say, you know, the, the four that I think that we all agree need to go because of where the baseball field is located. Um, but the others, I would leave open to if a design, the only way a design is going to fit um, and that tree needs to come down, then it needs to come down. But for the most part, let's save them. It's, it's more of a policy of the committee is save as many as possible. Correct. That's what, so that's what even I'm some of the ones you don't have on the map, maybe they get saved because right. we don't exactly. need to take them down. Right. Exactly. Um, we may get out there in number 60, I, don't know, I can't read it in the red, but 66 in the red there, based, based on what they can put up there, and they're like, oh, well, he can be saved. Well, great. Then he can, yeah. and then he can be saved. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm in the exact same boat. I'm not comfortable voting for voting for trees that we need to save that are out, that even that, but the playground ones more, we know what they are. We know what they are, everybody's seen them. We know exactly that. I'm not comfortable going through this saying, yep, this one has to be saved as part of our plan. We're making it yellow and that's just where, it doesn't make sense. I mean, if that's, if that's the case and that's what we're asking, then I'm gonna vote no for the whole tree protection plan because it, we're just asking too much to the, to the, to the, whole end of the project. My, my goal is to protect the trees we can and as many trees as we can and make this a nice natural looking park. Not a clear cut playground, a walking trail that goes through trees and, and around stuff and beautiful. I'm hoping how that we can, design it and cut down no trees. Yeah, how we implement that, I don't have any control over. I know we can build the plan and you say we can build the plan of control, but this is pinpointing trees and trying to do to this level is more than we're tasked with in this committee, I think. And I just think we're over, way overthinking this. And, and, and we're hoping, and, and at the end of the day, we're still not going to protect as many trees as if we only identify these eight trees that we want to keep. Ultimately, what's going to happen is when the plan gets implemented, somebody's going to say, I wish they had kept tree 56, but I understand why I got cut down. Nah. The, the goal of this whole exercise, though, is to be able to give Katie um, clear direction as to where she should locate features. And if there's any trees that are problematic for, to, to identify. Can I say Katie's goal of the project?
this is an implementation of the field. This is not something, I'm not going to move the trail around the GPS tree that is plus or minus 15 feet right now. Because no one's going to take my plan and survey the exact pinpoint location of these okay. items to implement them. So I think what they're saying is a, a general statement flagging the trees that are GPS and a general statement that said the trees as GPS we would like to protect and a general statement that says as many if not all is the desire of the committee. Yep. Yes. Here. So all yellow, except no. for solid red ones. I would even leave no. the red ones if they can. If they can work around the red ones and the red ones get saved, they get saved. But if they don't, well, the, the red ones might be in bad condition. I'll, I'll so. stick in this. <laughs> you can not cut it down, and this is another thing that bothers me about construction: is they won't cut it down; they will leave it. Good example is that uh, oak right over at the corner of the uh, parking lot for the fire department. The designer said, we're going to save it to be protected. It's right on the plans. Well, what they did was cut all the roots off. But we're not. So the tree had to come down, but that was on somebody else's nipple. And then the designer didn't have to get up and stand up and say, well, why did you cut that gorgeous tree down? It, Besides the berm, though, yeah. and the playground equipment, digging the walking trail, we're not taking up. How, dig, how deep are we going to dig the walking trail? Eight, ten inches. Eight, ten inches on one side of the tree. It's not ideal, but you, you're telling, I mean, this, you're talking about construction here. You're talking about digging and, and real movement of land. This is not the same level. Eight to ten inches is going to kill a tree that's Absolutely. on one side. Then I mean. See, this is why we had the protection zone. I know, but but it's uh, on the trees that are not movable. I I, I you still have think. To take them down and stand up and say the tree has to come down. Don't do it, and well, we'll damage it so much, like they did at the library, where in a couple of years those trees are going to have to come down. They were protected said right on the plants to be protected. There was a tree but, protection zone. But just so we're all clear, that means that what you're telling us is that if, if we need the walking trail and there's a tree that's not movable, that's within 12 times the diameter of the tree at, at height, right. the walking trail is going to be, you want us to cut that tree down if we don't have the ability to move that walking trail. If, if the walking trail has to be there, then we should just cut the tree down at the point of the project. Yes. And I don't know. Who killed a tree immediately? How long does a tree typically uh, live? In my experience, anywhere from three to 60 years. <laughs> so, so we could get 60 years out of a tree yeah, that we well, don't that cut down. That was a very, very <laughs> unusual tree. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was one out of a million. Most of them. Yeah, some pretty good is, trees. They go into a period of decline. Yeah. And here, what do you got? You got walking areas. Now the tree is going to start losing branches so are they going to send people out to prune them out to make them safe or are they going to cut it down you know it, it's you try to avoid damaging so so my position is that anything that's solid yellow or yellow with a red circle we should say those trees should be protected the red ones the solid red ones we, we know something's going to have to happen with those they're marked solid red. Jim, you've, you've given your opinion. We could even solid red the, the pines that you're not that interested in necessarily in keeping, but, but it seems to me it's pretty easy to reroute around those three trees over toward the right. Why don't we just put a stake in the ground and say these are to be protected? I, I'm in favor of keeping all of those bright yellow ones inside the playground. I think a good playground designer is going to design around those trees. There's a lot of shade that comes off of those trees. It is hot as blazes out there in the summer. And we're talking about putting down some rubber, which can increase the heat in the playground. So we need all the shade we can get in the playground to keep it a cool enough space to play in in the summertime. And we're talking about a natural park. I think it makes a lot of sense to keep the trees. I don't see anything that I, I think they can't work around except the red, especially since we, we're talking about GPS 
pin put, it, this looks like it's all reroutable with potentially the, the exception of those solid reds. So I'll put a stake in the ground and I'll say, I think we should protect all of those except the reds. But what does protect me? Yeah, but that's that's the the whole question is I agree, but what's protect me? At a, what's the cost? What is the, the what is the point where the project stops because there's a tree there? What is the point they take the tree down? Yeah. Do you, but do you think that really would happen? Do At the you, bottom there, yes, you absolutely. Tell you see that there's any part of this project that would have to like come to a screeching halt and not get completed because of a tree? It would solve our your your solution would solve our immediate need, which is to be able to give plan direction to say that um, we'd like stuff rerouted around this if possible, because these are protected yeah, trees. Unless there's a compelling reason, and this again goes to what Chris was saying earlier about the wording. These trees are to be protected per the tree, guide, tree protection guidelines, right. unless there is a compelling design reason why this is not possible. Right. But that's fine. I'm fine with that. But that's the, that's the key. As long as there's something <laughs> in there that say that you have to actually try to design around the trees. Where you can't design around the trees and, and you can prove you've tried, then what has to happen happens. But you have to try to design around the trees per the guideline, per the distance. I'm fine with that. I just don't like this idea of saying the trees are protected, you can't touch them, you figure out how to get around it. You have to, it there has to be some flexibility. I, 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 that's all. I'm. And I don't think anyone, one of us, is arguing that they all have to be protected. <laughs> no, but I think the wording is just the, the key to all of that. Well, the wording is in the tree protection guidelines, yep. and that'll be determined at our July 18th meeting. So um, why don't, are we in consensus that we want to turn the yellow with red circles to all yellow, leave the reds alone, and um, move forward with the protection map as it, as it is? I think there was one more comment. Did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Okay. All right. So that means right. we would have two categories, the protect unless there's a compelling reason, and the don't need to specifically yeah. protect. I'm fine with that. I just designate as a red would be the potentially just to cut out, and then the yellow to protect. Yeah. And then you could work on um, adding some verbiage that makes your. Yeah, and I see what everybody agrees to. They, I'm fine with that. The only worry I have about that, it, 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 and it, as long as everybody's okay with it, is it does it does place the same emphasis on trees that are on the on the fence and the trees in the playground. It, it, everything's on the same scale, so it, yeah, may, it, it makes things it makes things sound less important, but it's fine. Okay, is everybody is there a consensus? Does everybody agree with yeah. that? Yeah. So all yellows, all reds. Only yellow and red, two colors. Would like to point out that during your walk around, I noticed the whole group got right in underneath the shade. It was very cool. Right. And the trees also. The shade in under trees is better than under shade under uh, structures. It's cooler. Just, uh, by the way, I will volunteer to help uh, the architect identify these trees. Okay. All she has we'll, to do is give me a call. We'll let the board of selectmen know that. I'm sorry. We'll let the board of selectmen know that. Okay. <laughs> the offer has been made. Any other comments or questions? All right. Um, I think we're, we're good for now. So our next meeting is going to be July 18th, um, 7 o'clock, this room. Um, um, Chris is going to be running the meeting. I won't be here. I'll be participating remotely. The goal is to... Um, Fastest meeting ever. The goal is... To, yeah, thank you. The goal is to um, <laughs> have the master plan uh, document the, the, the words in that um, voted on and approved. So if you guys can take the time, Adele, you still need to, to provide comment for the ADA stuff. If you guys will take the time to go through and see, especially looking at the recommendations, if there's stuff that you want to change or add or, or whatnot, that would be helpful. Can you send that file to us? I can only, when I access it online, I can't print it. So if you can. It's enormous. Yeah, I can't, unfortunately I can't share it that way. What I can do is I can, um, I can post it on a, um, a, a document sharing site yeah. um, and you can download it from there. Yeah. Um, the, the, okay. you know. I just want to be able to print it and mark it, so. Just it's getting those changes back that um, I we really need we really need one working document we can't yeah. kind of piece it no, right I together. No, just to prepare for the meeting. I you know if I have anything that I wanted to talk okay. about, I, I like I like paper. Mold school. Yes. All right. Well, and I'm when do you need my comments, Buff? As soon as possible. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> 
any other questions? Well, I just want to take a quick moment to thank you guys. I won't be here next meeting, but thank you for, uh, for showing up and doing the work. I think we, we got a lot accomplished, and um, I'm proud of the work we've done. So thank you. All right. I adjourn.